Welcome to Big Z Sports presentation of playoff high school basketball play-by-play coverage. Tonight, in this Division III District Championship, the Malvern Hornets take on the Martins Ferry Purple Riders. Tonight's game is presented by Altman, WM Commercial Roofing, Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, Novellus, Auto Works Collision Center of Strasburg, and DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Now, let's head courtside to the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio with Nick. It's district championship time out of Division Three and the East District. Big C Sports broadcasting today from Claymont High School as the Malvern Hornets are going to set are set to do battle with the Martins Ferry Purple Riders. Good evening, everybody. Whether you're tuned in at 99.9 or you're live streaming on the Big C Sports YouTube channel, thanks for tuning in with us today as we expect it to be an incredible showdown of high school basketball. You've got the undefeated Malvern Hornets coming in with a matchup with the 16-8 and eight Martins Ferry Purple Riders. Obviously, uh, both these teams undefeated in tournament play, the second season, <laughs> so to speak, and they are rolling right now. In today's broadcast, I'm joined by Aaron Stump and Adam Sueski. And guys, there's nothing better than playoff basketball, is there? I tell you what, these environments are electric, man. It was also my 6 o'clock when the doors opened. You had a ton of fans. There were people to trying to in. run to their seats in here. <laughs> we got another 30 minutes till tip-off right now, and we have got this gym full almost right now. It is awesome. Yeah, it's filling up quick. Every time I look at the door, there's more and more people coming in. <laughs> I, that parking lot's got to be stuffed full. They're probably parked along the road out there now. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's why Aaron got here so early, you know. I had to. We don't I, want him walking too far, right? <laughs> I'm going to pay for that later. Yes, on the you are. Probably. Yes, you are. <laughs> also, i got to give a big thank you to Mary Alice back in the PAC Drilling Studio. She'll be pushing all the buttons for our radio broadcast and Casey Claxon and Logan McPeak for Claxon Communications for running our live stream for this evening. So the matchup, gentlemen, it is a district championship, and whoever wins takes one step closer to a state title. That's how you have to look at it every single time. Obviously, the winner of this game will move on then to Athens out of the district rounds. And the interesting part about this is, although the game didn't count, this is a game that already happened earlier on this season. Malvern actually scrimmaged Martins Ferry, and it was Martins Ferry who came out on top in that showdown. Do you think that might play into Malvern's head, any any of the players at all? I think at this point, again, that, that's almost your preseason. You're trying to play with combinations. You're trying to play with different scenarios right now, and, and none of that stuff matters at all. Again, it's what you do between the lines. You know, Malvern's going to be very confident coming in here. They're 25-0. and 0. There's nobody that's touched them yet this year. And you and, and the, for both teams, when you saw them coming in, we still have uh, – Martins Ferry shooting right now on the court. They look very relaxed, and, and that's that's a sign of a very confident team. Yeah, back at scrimmage time, I would say that uh, both teams probably opened their playbooks up maybe about a half a page. If that. <laughs> if that. Uh, you know, and Ferry, they, they got stuff that they can do, as, as does the Malvern Hornets. So, that you know, everything's progressed so much. They've learned so much more about their teams. When you're talking about a preseason matchup, I don't think it's going to play a lot into this. Well, the other thing, too, Adam, you've had a whole season to get better, and and these teams, we, we've seen them both really improve throughout the season. you got some guys that, you know, come from football teams, you know, and it's a different kind of in-shape, game shape, uh, and, and that whole season leading up to this point, again, you've seen both teams really improve. So you're talking about opening the playbook just a little bit, Adam. So what you're saying is it's a pick and roll high and throw to low block. That's about all you got. <laughs> that was probably all you saw down there. Yeah, there was no uh, no any motions or anything like that. But it could have been. Well, I can promise you that both these head coaches are looking forward to this matchup, as are all of the players, and we're looking forward to bringing it to you. Don't forget to leave us a like and follow on all of our social media, social media platforms. We'll have updates on our Facebook page, courtesy of all night long Shannon Thomas, who's also in the building for today's presentation. And if you are not subscribed yet, do so to our YouTube channel. You get notified every single time we go live. So we will go ahead and take it to our first time out. And when we come back, we will be talking with head coach for Martins Ferry, Derek Edwards, about his team and this matchup. District championship actions on the way with Big Z Sports. Altman is here for you in your community because you matter. We're proud to be the area's first and only independent health system. We are one team joined together and committed to one mission to lead our community to improved health. And we've always been here 
dedicated to providing you with the very best in care, wellness, education, insurance, and more. For your community and for your family, Altman is always here for you. Hi, I'm Zach Moteis with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this winter. Are you neglecting your building's fifth wall? Did you know something as simple as a clogged drain can lead to a destructive roof leak? Protect your business assets with WM Commercial Roofing's Umbrella Care Program. This program will provide you with regular maintenance surveys and repairs to extend the life of your roof. Invest in your business with our top quality materials, advanced techniques, and skilled craftsmanship. Are you ready for a reliable partnership? Visit our website, wmcommercialroofing.com, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to learn more. Novellus Eurexville is the world leader in aluminum recycling, and they need you. They have immediate openings for general laborers, equipment operators, and various skilled trade positions. They'll start you at $22 per hour or higher. There are advancement opportunities, and Novellus offers industry-leading benefits. To apply or find out more, go to novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. That's novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. Novellus is an equal opportunity employer. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint, digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. Are you ready to give your home a new look? Look no further than Wayne Door, your one-stop shop for all your residential needs. Garage doors, entry doors, windows, and patio doors, Wayne Door has everything you need to upgrade your curb appeal. With 24-7 emergency service, you can trust their technicians to be there when you need them most. Stop by the Dover Showroom on State Route 39 or visit waynedoor.com and let the experts help transform your house into the home of your dreams. Wayne Door, more than just garage doors, from the people you can trust. Ron Rug Automotive has been Malvern's one-stop automotive repair shop since 1999. Ron Rug Automotive is a Napa certified repair shop with ASC certified technicians. Ron Rug Automotive is able to handle any job from oil changes and tire replacements to installing Jasper engines and transmissions. They also offer boat, RV, and trailer repair. Learn more about Ron Rug Automotive by visiting the website ronrugautomotive.com or find Find them on Facebook. Welcome back into your Wood Electric pregame show. Big Z Sports bringing you East District Championship action out of Division Three. as we've got the Malvern Hornets taking on the Martins Ferry Purple Riders. Joining us now along the sideline is head coach for Martins Ferry and Derek Edwards. And coach, tell me a little bit about your season, obviously, to this point. I mean, you get to a district championship, you got to be feeling pretty good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Very, very successful so far. You know, we've had a lot of challenges along the way, just as any team would. Uh, played a lot of challenging games, especially down the stretch there, battled battled some injuries uh, down the stretch and you know we were able to win some some really close tournament games and here we are. Now coach, uh, I know that you guys have got a lot of really great contributors, a, really, a lot of great contributions all over the court, but I got to ask you, Alex Reese and Anthony Booth, two names that I feel like kind of drive Purple Riders basketball right now. Yeah, yeah and they're two-way players, you know, uh, offensively, defensively, uh, they're great leaders for us, uh, they're inside out players, both of them. Uh, they do so many things for the team, but you know it, it, it's a five-man game, and, and then more than that, our bench. You know, our, we've had some bench players step up uh, throughout the season, throughout the course of the tournament. So it, it's going to take a tremendous effort tonight. 
Now, you guys kind of are familiar with the Malvern Hornets, uh, scrimmaging them every year in the yeah. kind of off-season, preseason period, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what you guys have been talking about taking on uh, taking them on. Well, they're 25-0 and 0 for a reason. I know obviously, they're well coached. Uh, Coach Tucci, um, over 600 wins in his career. Uh, I, I don't know where that ranks in the state, but it's got to be way up there. Uh, he's been around a long time, so his team is going to be well coached, well prepared. Uh, and they're, they're extremely talented from the guard position to the center position. They got stretch fives. You know, they have guards uh, that really defend you. Uh, so once again, you know, we're, we're going to have to play our best game, and we know that. And looking back through the uh, tournament to this point, through the couple games that you guys have had, uh, no win is easy. We know that for sure. Uh, what have you guys really been talking about in terms of keeping the focus on what the ultimate goal is, which is to continue every single week in the tournament? Yeah, deal, dealing with adversity. You know, there's stretches in games where you're, you're going to have some really good times, some really good stretches, and there's going to be some stretches where the other team's going to get it going a little bit. And that's what tournament basketball is all about. You have to be able to handle those stretches, you know, and, and stay level-minded and keep fighting. And, and our team has done a great job of that. And there's no doubt, you know, we're going to have some times where we go on some runs tonight, and so is Malvern. So we're going to have to really play through those stretches. And finally for you, Coach, uh, biggest key for Martins Ferry to get a win and get a district championship? Unity. Unity. Unit. It's going to take a, a, a contribution from all of the players on our team tonight uh, to, to defeat a 25-0 team uh, and, and a well-respected team. Well, I, like, I always like that kind of answer, yeah. Coach. Well, thank you so yeah. much for your time and good luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Head Coach Derek Edwards brought to you by Kime for the Martins Ferry Purple Riders. Stay tuned as we wrap up our Wood Electric pregame show as we're going to be hearing from Head Coach Dennis Tucci for the Malvern Hornets after this. Roofing and Exterior Product Services of Ohio, or REPS, has serviced the roofing and construction industry since 1988. REPS and its team of professionals represent several of the major commercial roofing, continuous building insulation, exterior product, rain screen assembly, concrete, and waterproofing manufacturers in the Midwest. Their roofing, exterior, and waterproofing divisions work seamlessly together to help you create a complete building envelope. REPS is a proud supporter of Malvern Hornets Athletics and wishes them the best of luck in tonight's game. This is Jordan Hartzler. At Hartzler's Quality Housing, our goal is to help customers achieve the dream of home ownership. We have been a family-owned, affordable housing business for over 40 years. We value our customers and have the knowledge and experience to help you walk through the home buying process from start to finish. Conveniently located just off I-77 in New Philadelphia, stop by and browse their model homes or learn more by visiting Hartzler's.com. Pieces with Purpose is a custom apparel and decal shop located in Carrollton. They are devoted to promoting independence, purpose, and confidence for their family and community members facing developmental disabilities and the struggles those bring. They do this through custom apparel pieces, sports gear, and window vehicle decals. Pieces with Purpose offers vinyl, embroidery, screen printing, and digitally printed designs. See all Pieces with Purpose offers by visiting PiecesWithPurposeCustomTees.com. Pieces with Purpose is a proud supporter of the Malvern Hornets. Your local one-stop shop, Rockies, offering a full-service auto and truck repair shop at the Waynesburg location. You can schedule your appointment today by calling 330-866-5501. If you need a tow, they have that too. Stop into any of the three convenience store locations, Waynesburg, Malvern, or Minerva, to fill up the tank and enjoy a hot cup of coffee. Rockies has been family-owned for almost 50 years, and they would like to thank you for your continued support. And from everyone on Rockies' team, go Hornets! The Clark Kidder Real Estate Team is founded on trust, integrity, discretion, and a total commitment to maximizing the value of your home with 100% satisfaction. Working together, Robin and Melanie have found their diverse neighborhood knowledge and savvy business skills to be perfect complements in finding their clients the perfect fit in their home buying experience. To learn more, visit ClarkKitterTeam.CutlerHomes.com. The Clark Kidder Real Estate Team would like to wish the best of luck to the Malvern Hornets in tonight's game. The Contini Insurance Agency knows that shopping insurance isn't always fine, but they strive to make the experience a little less painful. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or recreational vehicles, as an independent insurance agency, they will make recommendations for the coverage you need at a price you can afford. With multiple companies and options available to best suit each situation. To learn more about the Contini Insurance Agency, visit ContiniInsurance.com. The Contini Insurance Agency is a proud supporter of Malvern Hornet Athletics. 
Ishman's Fresh Market IGA has provided residents in Malvern and Minerva the freshest quality products since 1954. The family-owned grocery store prides themselves on providing the communities with quality products, including their daily cut fresh meats, by their on-site butcher. Ishman's Fresh Market IGA is a proud supporter of community events in their local school districts and would like to wish the Malvern Hornets best of luck in tonight's game. See all Kishman's Fresh Market IGA offers by visiting kishmans.com. This is Brian Williams, commercial lender with the First National Bank of Denison. The day you decided to open your business, you planted the seed. As your roots become stronger, the First National Bank of Denison is here to help your business grow. Strong businesses make strong communities, and because we live, work, and raise our families here, your business benefits us all. Whether you need more space, equipment, or inventory, come see us today for your next business loan. We are a local bank with local decision makers, and your success is our greatest reward. At the First National Bank of Denison, we have our roots where others have their branches. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Welcome back to the Wood Electric pregame show as Big Z Sports is set for a Division Three East District Championship showdown. It's the Malvern Hornets taking on the Martins Ferry Purple Riders. We'll go courtside with the coach brought to you by Kime and its head coach, Dennis Tucci, for the Malvern Hornets. Coach, obviously an incredible run up to this point for you guys. I know you're always excited about the next round. We come to another district championship opportunity for Malvern. Probably feeling pretty good coming off that latest victory. Yeah, I'm happy with my guys and uh, you know a lot of people ask him, and what do you feel about tonight? Well, my guys feel good, and that's all you can do. It's up to the guys. It's not up to me. And and uh, they've had a great season, 22-0. Uh, and 0. Now we're 3-0 and 0 in the second season. And, and really excited to get the opportunity to play for a district championship. Now, something that always, is always kind of interesting, uh, you get to a district championship, and it's a team that you're a little bit familiar with, a team that you scrimmaged earlier on this season. So does that help kind of get you a better feel for them? Yeah, we know them a little bit. We scrimmage them every year, first, first scrimmage of the year. Uh, you know, we always, for years, we said, well, if we can hang with Martins Ferry and we beat Martins Ferry, we know we're going to have a good team. And it's funny because they say the same thing. When they scrimmage Malvern, if it goes well, they know, hey, we're going to be pretty good. So that's kind of interesting. But, uh, yeah, we know them. They know us. There won't be any secrets tonight. Now, when you come into a matchup like this, uh, a gymnasium that you guys have already played in throughout uh, during this year, uh, I'm always interested to ask, uh, if, does that feel like some type of advantage you know, for one team to be able to have or be at a location where they've already played on before? Because you guys are kind of familiar with this place. We are. We play our IBC showcase here every year. Uh, I think it helps us. They, they came down and practiced yesterday, or I, I guess on Wednesday. Uh, we chose not to because we're familiar with the place and we can't shoot anyway. So <laughs> we just decided not to do that. But I think it helps a little bit. And it's good for our fans. They know where they want to stop and eat on the way. And, and uh, I feel pretty good about it. I'll have to make sure to tell the bench that as I'm walking back up over to our spot. Uh, I know you said earlier on the season a lot of people ask you about Jay Allen Perino. They ask you about uh, you know Rodney Smith, Mitchell Minor, guys like that. But you said before you kind of got like a seven-headed monster when it comes to the offensive attack. You know, realistically, uh, how important is that going to be tonight to get everybody putting the ball in the basket and everybody contributing? That's really important for us. You know, the other night, Drake Hutchinson came off the bench and had an outstanding offense game. His defense, he's going to hound the ball. We know that. And offensively, he stays on his feet. He's a special player. Sometimes he gets a little carried away and leaves his feet a little bit early. But he's a great passer, a willing passer, but he really, uh, really can score inside with something. And he helps with the press. And then uh, our other kid off the bench, Eric Swain, and those nice, he's, he's carried us, especially early in the year when we were battling some injuries. So we feel like we're good that way. And then, of course, we didn't even mention Dylan Phillips, who, as a senior, I mean, he's had a tremendous career at Malvern. And uh, we're hoping he hits some big shots for us tonight as well. And coach, finally for you here, uh, we know Martins Ferry, just looking at them from top to bottom, they got a lot of length, they got a lot of good athleticism, and you guys already know they can bury shots from pretty much anywhere on the offensive part of the court. Uh, what have you guys been talking about? We know you're going to bring that pressure, but has there been anything special you guys have been looking at? Yeah, you know, we're going to try to bring the pressure. We don't know how that's going to play out tonight, so in case it doesn't, we've got to stop Reese inside. But he's just not an inside player. He's a basketball player. He'll make threes. And he'll, he'll, he'll score at all three levels. And then the other kid we're really worried about is number 12, Anthony Booth, sophomore, lanky kid, about 6'2", but he can flat out shoot it. So we've got to be wary of those two guys, but they're, they're similar to us. They're going to play 6'7 guys, and they're all basketball players. Well, thank you for your time as always, Coach. Good luck to the Hornets here in this championship. I appreciate it. Thanks again. Head coach Dennis Tucci brought to you by Kime for the Malvern Hornets. Stick around. We wrap up pregame and get to the night's tip-off. Division Three East District Championships on the way. 
Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with Auto Works Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, Auto Works has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art Hunter Alignment System. Call 330-878-4223. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Let Auto Works of Strasburg work for you. Live more comfortably this winter with the help of Unified Insulation Systems. Unified Insulation Systems is a full-service insulation and weatherization provider that can show you how to properly insulate your home or business. With good insulation from Unified Systems, you can prevent your gutters from freezing and get rid of your high-energy bills. Call Jeremiah Thomas today for your free quote at 330-773-7377 or visit unifiedinsulation.com. Call Unified Insulation Systems today, your most trusted name in insulation. Do you hunt, fish, sew, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sug with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 littles with bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. The certified public accountants at Needenthal & Company believe in the value of relationships. Needenthal & Company has been in business for over 50 years in your community, helping individuals and businesses grow. Needenthal & Company can help manage and prepare your payroll, plan your estate, and prepare your business and personal income taxes. Stop in to the Needenthal facility on North Wooster Avenue in Dover and become a valued client today. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at PAC drilling.com the Tuscarawas County dairy farmers want you to know that low fat chocolate milk is a great choice for student athletes and hard workers it provides the nutrition needed after practices games or a hard day at work and it tastes great low fat chocolate milk is packed with carbohydrates for energy proteins to repair muscles fluids to rehydrate plus vitamins and minerals to help build strong bones and bodies it's the official beverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association Tuscarawas County dairy farmers farms family food Big Z Sports is live from Claymont High School in the Wood Electric pregame show as we'll move things right along into your Needenthal and company keys to the game. As Mr. Aaron Stump, I am going to start off with the Malvern Hornets, undefeated throughout the regular season, clearly still undefeated in tournament play <laughs> as well. This is a team that you kind of know given that you play them in the preseason. And I think the biggest key for them is going to have to be crash the boards on both ends. We know that the size and the length that Martins Ferry presents could be a very big problem if you don't find yourself boxing out and pulling down those rebounds. Yeah, we've seen that time and time again with these playoff games. When teams get lax on those defensive boards, it puts a lot of points on the board quick for your opponents. So, again, just those fundamentals, that's what they've been preaching all year, and hopefully they come strong this year or this game for it. 
Definitely. As for the Martins Ferry Purple Riders, you come into this game, if you're just looking at records, people would say you're the underdog. You're playing the number one seed. It's a team that you know hasn't lost in quite a long time. Come in here, play the spoiler. You want to be the team that comes in and knocks off Goliath, so to speak. I think I made that analogy in uh, the Carrollton game, the Carrollton girls game as well. Why not? Why not us? Why not? Why can't we be the ones to come in and knock off the king? Well, Coach Edwards said it for the Purple Riders, too. You know they're going to come out and just try to smash you in the face really quick. You're going to have those runs, and you're going to have to have the patience and have that team chemistry to keep those runs from getting out of control. Try to get your own run back and stay in that game. Once you get too far behind, malvern has got a great job of, of kind of breaking your neck and finishing games. We'll have to come back and revisit our keys to the game and see how they are playing out throughout the, tonight's entire contest. As Malvern takes on Martins Ferry, it is an East District Division Three championship. It's going to be on the way shortly with Big Z Sports. We're going to take another timeout, and when we return, we'll get to your starting lineups brought to you by Wayne Dorr and tip off. That's all to come on Big Z Sports. This is Carly Mills. At First Federal Community Bank, our mission is to empower the financial well-being of our community one person at a time. Through integrity and quality, we earn the trust of our customers and exceed their expectations. First Federal Community Bank, investing in our community since 1898. Serving your banking needs in Dover, New Philadelphia, Eurexville, Sugar Creek, Berlin, and Mount Hope. First Federal Community Bank, member FDIC. Finding your perfect vehicle can be frustrating. The selection process, working out a deal, the pushy salespeople. Well, Sarsha and Ford of Leansburg takes away all of those frustrations by offering transparent pricing, a large new and pre-owned inventory, and salespeople that you'll consider a friend by the time your sale is complete. Sarsha and Ford of Leansburg is proud to have won the Ford President's Award three consecutive years based solely on that customer satisfaction. And you can see the difference at 300 West Lisbon Street in Waynesburg or at sarshanofwaynesburg.com, where community and customers always come first. Jeff Wallach LLC is a family-owned and operated company proudly serving greater Northeast Ohio and surrounding communities for over 25 years. We specialize in vinyl siding, replacement windows and doors, gutters, downspouts, and much more. We provide quality service regardless of the size or scope of the project. Our crews are reliable, respectful, and mindful of a safe work environment. Jeff Wallach LLC is certified by the Better Business Bureau. Call today and discover how we can assist you in making your vision a reality. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Hi, this is Jan McInturf. For the past 30 years, the residents in and around Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff at McInturf Realty for buying and selling of residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all those communities, there's nothing better than high school basketball. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season and make the call to McInturf Realty at 330-364-SOLD or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. Reduce your energy costs and get rebates up to $400? Thad here for TMK Valley Propane. The Ohio Propane Council offers Ohio residents rebates for installing new propane water heaters and furnaces. Heck, even licensed installers can receive incentives for installation. Visit OhioPropaneRebates.com. This public service announcement is brought to you by your friends at TMK Valley Propane. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. Welcome back into your Wood Electric pregame show. Big Z Sports about to have Division Three East District Championship action. It's the Malvern Hornets taking on the Martins Ferry Purple Riders. And, guys, I'm going to do my best tonight not to go way too over the top on excitement. Uh, who am I kidding? It's going to happen. <laughs> this is going to be one heck of a showdown. We certainly know it. I know both uh, head coaches are ready to go. All these players are ready to go. And we are so looking forward into this contest for tonight. Who's going to move on? to Athens, everything on the line, your entire season, everything you've worked for comes down to this, which is always incredible to think. Yeah, it it 
again, we want to say thank you for our listeners and all those watching the YouTube channel tonight. But there is nothing like a live gym come playoff time. There, the seats are filling up. There are not many seats left at all. The excitement's right there. You just feel the nerves. There, there's just an energy about a gym when it comes to high school playoff basketball. Oh, they're without a doubt. So we're going to move things right along and go into our starting lineups brought to you by Wayne Door. I'll have you start off with Martin's Ferry Stump. For Derek Edwards and the Purple Riders at guard, you have a 5-foot, 10-inch senior. Number three, Turner Crawl at forward, a 6-foot, six 6-inch six junior. Number five, Alex Reese at guard, a 6-foot, 2-inch sophomore. Number 12, Anthony Booth at guard, a 6-foot, 1 freshman. Number 13, Elijah Smith. And another guard, a 5-foot, 11-inch junior. Number 14, Tevin Williams. Thank you for that. And now the Wayne Door starting lineups for the Malvern Hornets. Leading things off for them is number three, the senior forward listed at six foot two. It is Dylan Phillips. Then it's number 10, the six foot three senior guard, the leading scorer for Malvern in J. Allen Barino, the thousand point scorer. <laughs> On top of that, you have number 11, a junior standing at six foot two, listed at forward. It's Rodney Smith. Then you've got number 21, six foot five senior forward, Mitchell Minor. Then at center, standing at six foot five and a junior, the man in the middle, it will be Jared Withrow. That's your starting lineups for Dennis Tucci and the Malvern Hornets, brought to you by Wayne Door. We're going to be wrapping up our Wood Electric pregame show here shortly as we're going to get the national anthem underway in just a little bit. Another reminder, if you're tuned in to 99.9, you can also watch this game live streaming on our YouTube channel. Get subscribed. It's absolutely free, <laughs> and you get notified when we go live. And we cannot say thank you enough to all of our great sponsors for all of their support throughout this season. The Malvern faithful on their feet as they applaud, waiting for the starting lineups to be announced here. We're going to step aside as we've got our national anthem on the way. High school basketball, district championship action. It's coming up next. Altman is here for you in your community because you matter. We're proud to be the area's first and only independent health system. We are one team joined together and committed to one mission to lead our community to improved health. And we've always been here, dedicated to providing you with the very best in care, wellness, education, insurance, and more. For your community and for your family, Altman is always here for you. Hi, I'm Zach Moutice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this winter. Are you neglecting your building's fifth wall? Did you know something as simple as a clogged drain can lead to a destructive roof leak? Protect your business assets with WM Commercial Roofing's Umbrella Care program. This program will provide you with regular maintenance surveys and repairs to extend the life of your roof. Invest in your business with our top quality materials, advanced techniques, and skilled craftsmanship. Are you ready for a reliable partnership? Visit our website, wmcommercialroofing.com, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to learn more. Novellus Eurexville is the world leader in aluminum recycling, and they need you. They have immediate openings for general laborers, equipment operators, and various skilled trade positions. They'll start you at $22 per hour or higher. There are advancement opportunities, and Novellus offers industry-leading benefits. To apply or find out more, go to novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. That's novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. Novellus is an equal opportunity employer. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint, digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. Back 
back into your PAC Drilling Mobile Studio as we're set to wrap up the Wood Electric pregame show. It is almost time for tip-off. Division Three East District Finals are going to be on the way here with Big Z Sports. You can feel the electricity in this building. I'll jump down to the sideline with Adam Sueski as I'll be doing throughout the night. And Adam, it's as capacity of a crowd as it possibly could be. Yeah, you talked about uh, you know your energy in the last break and. Uh, I, you know, you, I think you might actually be able to take it easy tonight because I think the crowds will be able to take care of you. You're surrounded over there, and on the other side of the gym, it's just as full. Look, man, I don't have to work tomorrow. If I blow out my voice, it's fine. i got a couple of days to relax and recuperate. I'm wondering how it's going to go because that might end up happening. The Malvern Hornets take on the Martins Ferry Purple Riders. And, Aaron, I mean, I don't know what else we could say to hype this up more. I mean, this is – as good as it gets. You no, know, it was kind of funny. We, we got these headsets on so we can hear each other, and then we took them off. We both looked at each other like, oh, this is going to be fun tonight. This, this is going to be good. <laughs> it certainly will be, as currently it is Martin's Ferry that is being introduced. As we already mentioned, they enter the game at 16 and 8 throughout this reg throughout the season. They lost the OVAC to Wheeling Central 60 to 52. They did win the Buckeye 8. They beat Harrison Central a couple of times to accomplish that. So far this season, this is a team averaging about 64 points a game, giving up about 55. So it's not as though they are winning by a wide margin. However, there's something to be said in the tournaments when it comes to weathering the storm and being able to find the edge at the end of the day. On the other side of the coin for the Malvern Hornets, a little bit different story. We know this is a team that can score in bunches and will smother you on defense, and they can make it a double-digit lead in the blink of an eye. Yeah, both teams right now, again, they have that confidence right now, but Malvern's been able to do that all year, and, and when they get that lead, they are just able to keep that throttle down on the metal and, and just finish games really strong, which is indicative of their 25-0 record right now. Yeah, it certainly is, and we have to thank again all of the wonderful sponsors for their entire support this season. There was a whole bunch who jumped on in this Malvern Hornets broadcast. We'll be getting to them throughout the night as well as all of our great sponsors from throughout the regular season as well. Yeah, I forgot to mention when we were talking about the crowd, Martin Ferry had two full buses of students that came to <laughs> Just this students. game. And all you have to do is look across the gym and you won't question that one bit. Well, if you've been here to Claymont High School, you know that they've got the other side there behind the scores table. There's a section that says visitor student. Yeah, it's full. Yeah, there's no more <laughs> students going in there. No, you can't really pack them in. We feel like sardines down here, but that's all right. That makes for an, a fantastic atmosphere. We'll run through again real quick. Your starting lineups brought to you by Wayne Tor as the for the Malvern Hornets. It's Dylan Phillips, Jay Allen Barino, Rodney Smith, M Mitchell Miner, and Jared Withrow. And for the Purple Riders, Turner, Turner Crow, Alex Reese, Anthony Booth, Elijah Smith, and Tevin Williams. As the starters are now being introduced for Malvern as well. And a reminder to everybody, the winner of this contest, they move on to the Athens leg of the tournament, so to speak, into the regionals. And we already know uh, that the Malvern Hornets like to make that their second home, or at least they try their very best. And under head coach Dennis Tucci, they've been there quite a bit. Over 600 career wins now for him. But there's a reason that this team is undefeated and they've gotten to this point. A lot of credit does go to Coach Tucci, but a lot of credit's got to be made to this starting five and the guys coming off the bench. This is a special group. Yeah, what's well, been kind of neat, too, again, you, you think Coach Tucci, he's been there a bunch of years. He's kind of used to this. But if you've seen him in the gym, He's as excited as anybody tonight. He just loves this high school basketball game. Yeah, Nick, you mentioned their depth, and that's one thing I've noticed throughout this tournament run. That's where their big advantage is for the Hornets because they go eight or nine deep consistently where a lot of other uh, boys' teams, you're lucky to go seven or eight, uh, you know, to have quality minutes out of the, out of the bench. This Malvern Hornet team is deep enough and that's where they can really run teams ragged. Well, that's something that Martins Ferry and uh, head coach Derek Edwards said in the pregame, that they want to try to match that. They want to bring a lot of players off the bench to stay fresh. We're going to see who's going to win the district championship for the East District out of Division Three. The ball is about to be in the air. It's Malvern, it's Martins Ferry, and it's with Big Z Sports, and that tip is won by Alex Reese for the Purple Riders. Here we go. As bringing the ball up is going to be Turner Crowell. As he'll kick left side, thought about a rhythm three, did Tevin Williams instead. He'll look around to go back door. He'll kick it out. Corner, three-point shot from Reese. Rattles in and out. Battle for the board. It's into the hands of Jared Withrow. And now here comes Malvern on offense, wearing those white trimmed in green with the green lettering. Martins Ferry, purple trimmed in gray and white. White lettering for them. 
It is Jay Allen Marino, the leading scorer for the Hornets, the 1,000-point scorer. He'll go right side to Phillips. Now he'll find Rodney Smith. Mid-range jumper is true, and it's an early lead for Malvern. Almost a steal there. Almost a steal on the inbound, and it is going to be a steal as Dylan Phillips got in the way of the ball handler in front of the Martins Ferry bench who ran out of room and stepped out of bounds. The first turnover of our game. We were talking earlier in the game, the first two, three minutes, how important that is, kind of feel each other out, see how the officials are. That first shot from Malvern, really big. Phillips goes to work on the right. It's Mitchell Minor kicks right corner. Smith thought about going into Withrow. Instead, they work the ball back out and around the top of the horn. Marino fakes the entry pass. He'll go to Miner, who steps into a three, left it off front iron. Good offensive board. Phillips, pump fakes, spins, hangs in the lane, not going to fall. Withrow offensive board. Kick out. Rodney Smith for three. Goes in and out. No good. Reese grabs the rebound, and a foul is going to get called underneath. I believe they're going to get Miner and say he went over the back. Yeah, again, Martinsbury having a little bit of issues on the defensive boards right now. Again, it looks like Melbourne really making a point to crash those things, and get three shots at it, that's not a good uh, a good uh, formula for Martins Ferry. Here comes Martins Ferry down the court quickly in transition. It is going to be underneath. It's Booth, and he's stolen as it's going to be Rodney Smith. Smith tries to go coast to coast, and he will. Rodney Smith with a quick four points, and Malvern leads. And there's Reese stolen away by Smith. He'll go to Marino. Down the lane. Hop step. Left it short. Rebound into the hands of Reese. Purple Riders bring it up. Their 6'6 junior forward has the ball. And there's a kick ball as Barino jumps in front of it and knocks it away. Probably a heads-up defensive play there. Man, Nick is right on that. He called that for the officials. Did nice job there. I have eyes. As we, <laughs> as we continue on here, of course, a big thank you to all of our presenting sponsors today, one of those being Ron Rue Automotive jumping on for today's broadcast, high school basketball, the district championships in Division Three in the East District. Ball in the hands of Martins Ferry, right side it's Smith. He'll go out to the corner, trapped, and Jay Allen Barino jumps in front of it. Barino with his first steal, hands off to Mitchell Miner, and the little underhand pass, and the finish off the glass for the big man. Getting this trap, bugging Martin Ferry right now, just having troubles getting sped up right now. And it's going to be another turnover. Rodney Smith's going to get credit for that steal. Withrow hustled back and grabbed it. Oh, my goodness, the Hornets are turning up the heat early. You can just see a difference in the speed right now. Again, Malvern's very methodical going through their offense. Mark Ferry just seems out of sorts right now trying to go too fast. Barino right side goes minor. Don't leave him open. In and out again. Rebound with throw. Another board. That's his third board this quarter. Corner three-point shot from Phillips is too long. Rebound into the hands of Martins Ferry, and it is Crow. Or Crowell, I should say. Pardon me. Here they come in transition. Off the backboard, no good. It was Elijah Smith, but cleaning up the next mess was Alex Reese as he'll score. First points on the board for Martins Ferry. Malvern leads 6-2, under five minutes in the first. Marino setting up the offense, wanted to go to Smith. Now some tight defense thrown out there by Booth for Martins Ferry. It'll go back to Marino. Right block, making space, blocked by Reese. Kareen's out of bounds, and it's Martins Ferry ball. Tell you, great help defense there by number five, Alex Reese for the Purple Riders. Again, gets, the, gets his ball back. Six foot six frame. That's going to be something that Malvern has to deal with as the ball is worked up quickly to Smith. He'll cross the timeline, trapped in the corner, picks up his dribble. Barino swipes at it. Smith, another steal. That's four. Down the court, Barino kicks right side. Three-point shot for Phillips won't fall, and it looked like it was off the hands of Withrow. There were two Martins Ferry defenders who were locking up with it. They're going to say Withrow knocked it out of their hands, though. First substitution in the game, Withrow's going to sit. Or two substitutions, I should say. Eric Swain's in as well as Drake Hutchison. Rodney Smith's going to take a breather for the Hornets. Like Adam was saying earlier, you got two subs coming in from Melbourne. They don't miss a beat with this group. Smith brings it up. He's trapped again. He'll go back out. It's Tevin Williams. He'll drive. Ball makes its way to the right corner. Booth for three is good. And the assist goes to Kroll. Booth buries it from the corner, and it's back to a one-point ball game. Well, Coach Edwards talked about those swings going back and forth. We saw Malvern swing, and here comes back the Purple Riders with five straight points. 
Hutchison has it at the top. Swain's trying to clear space for him. Hutchison not going to pull up. Instead, he'll go to Phillips. Now back to Hutchison. He'll drive in, clear some space, kick out to the corner. Swain, now he'll find Barino. As far into the right corner as he can go, he lost the handle. It's stolen away by Martins Ferry, but somehow back into the hands of Phillips. He'll drive, blocked again by Reese. Alex Reese is a problem down low. He does a great job of moving his feet. He doesn't panic, and again, great defensive position. Down to the sideline brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. Adam, you had something. Yeah, Alex Reese is making things difficult because he just <laughs> lingers in the paint. I mean, he's uh, it's almost like he's in his own type of zone, but every time they, the Hornets drive in, he's able to block it. Hutchison goes for three. It's too long. Rebound into the hands of Martins Ferry as it was Booth who hauls in his first board. Here come the Purple Riders. Reese cross court finds the open shooter. It's Smith. Too long. Rebound. Minor. Great box out that time. Absolutely. Now here comes Malvern. Hutchison goes in hard. Off the window. Won't score. But he got fouled and Kroll can't believe it. I think it's one of those examples. Again, he got the official that really didn't have a good angle on that. I don't think there was as much contact as that uh, official actually anticipated. So Drake Hutchison steps to the first Federal Community Bank free throw line. Hutchison was a guy that in the pregame head coach Dennis Tucci had so much praise for due to his ability to come off the bench and log some great minutes. He was no good on his first one from the charity stripe, though. Some substitutions for Martins Ferry. Sitting down was Kroll, and in is Maurice Barnett for the first time. Hutchison's next one, line drive off right block. Not going to fall. He's 0 for 2. So that keeps things at a 6-5 ball game. Reese brings it up for Ferry. He'll go left side. Miner got into yep. him, and that's going to be a foul, as we saw that one from here as Miner actually goes over and helps Reese back up off the court. He got the shove from behind. <laughs> Was it, wasn't much doubt that one. So Withrow and Smith are back on. Phillips and Miner will sit. Of course, a big thank you as well to Roofing and Exterior Product Services for hopping on for today's presentation of high school basketball. Division III East District Championship. Malvern leads 6-5 from Claymont High School in the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio. Barnett tries to go down Broadway. He'll go to Reese instead, who couldn't score, but Withrow got him up over the top. He's going to step to the free throw line. Again, you saw that attempted tra trap by Malvern come out. Purple Riders did a nice job dribbling away from it. Nice pass down low and strong to the basket. Reese will step to the line, the chance to give the Purple Riders the lead here. And like I said earlier, Aaron, he is going to be a problem all night for Malvern. We knew that coming in. His first one's good, and he ties up the game. Yeah, he goes 6'6", uh, six, six, and again, he's, he's every bit of six, six. really <laughs> smooth, too. Reese is ready. The fluorescent yellow shoes that he's got tonight <laughs> as well. And he's good on the second one, and Martins Ferry's got their first lead tonight. He's got a nice shot, too. It will be Barino to bring it up for the Hornets. They find themselves down early here in the first quarter. Under three showing. Barino's going to try to go Brown Broadway. Kicks out from the paint. Minor corner three, and it's good. And just like that, Mitchell Minor, who got the most brief rest I think I've ever seen, <laughs> comes back on and hits a big shot. You know, if you got someone like Jalen Barino, you don't need to worry. Again, just calm down, and that was a great assist he had. Ferry breaks the press, misses the shot. Alex Reese with the putback. He's got four rebounds and five and six points. Tie ball game, 9-9, to nine, two and a half in the first. Malvern with the ball. Hutchison in the corner, wants an interior pass to Miner. It's not there. He got double teamed down on the baseline in the paint. Right side nearly stolen away. Smith has it, though, with the strong hands. He'll go out. Swain drives off the window and scores, and that's a big bucket for Swain, who just scored up over top of Reese. Yeah, he saw him coming right at him. Did a great job of not panicking. Nice shot. Ferry stays true through the press again, and Reese is stripped. I don't know who got it. There were three Malvern Hornets who converged. That was bully ball down low. <laughs> converged would be a good term there. <laughs> Smith goes right side. Hutchison, they're going to let him out there. He's not much of a three-point shooter. He didn't pull up either. He tried earlier in the game. Now he's going to drive into the mid-range, go to his left from the free throw line, goes back out. Swain with a rhythm, three, and it goes in and out. Rebound into the hands there of Ferry. It's Anthony Booth, his second. Here comes Reese. Goes right side. It gets it into the hands of Williams. Williams working to his left. Goes Reese in the right corner. Drives right around Miner. Off the baseline. Can't score. Rebound goes to Malvern. Somehow Rodney Smith got his first rebound and got it out of there. Amongst the trees, so to speak. Good Hutchison. Move. Off the window. Can't score. Rebound into the hands of Barnett. Barnett. Running the court, 
Nice Euro step in the lane around Miner. Oh, Maurice Barnett <laughs> fooled him. And we're back to a tie game. We got ourselves a game here. <laughs> Marino drives right block, foul called. And it looks like, and using the clap of the hands there, Williams went down. He was hoping maybe there was going to be a charge, but he knew it. He was in the lane, and he was in the way. Yeah, he did a good job moving the feet. I think if he would have stayed up, they'd have let it go. When he kind of flopped there a little bit, uh, they called it on him. It will be Barino to inbound. Phillips is back in the game, game for Swain. Inbound, Phillips nearly lost it on the sideline, but he corrals it. Ball worked around now from Alvarez. Again, leaving Hutchinson wide open in front of the Martins Ferry bench. They're going to get Phillips in space. He'll kick Hutchison. He'll go back out. Phillips again, going to work, goes in with the left. Goes corner. Hutchison goes out to Barino, and they're going to reset. Coach Tucci calling the new play. Ma uh, Martins Ferry had that one scouted out. Good, Melvin doing a great job holding the ball here, probably for the last shot in the first quarter. A lot of heavy breathing from both sides as they've been running <laughs> up and down the court at a breakneck pace. Both on the court and in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> Ten seconds showing. It's Barino. Goes to the left. Phillips. Head fakes. The three-point shot goes back out. Barino. Just five seconds showing. Now he'll go corner. It's Miner. He got open. Three is not going to fall. And the ball is going to hit the court. And that will be the end of the first quarter. Cush Financial Group timeout as we go to the second. 11-11. Division three East District Championship rolls on right after this. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. Are you ready to give your home a new look? Look no further than Wayne Door, your one-stop shop for all your residential needs. Garage doors, entry doors, windows, and patio doors, Wayne Door has everything you need to upgrade your curb appeal. With 24-7 emergency service, you can trust their technicians to be there when you need them most. Stop by the Dover showroom on State Route 39 or visit waynedoor.com and let the experts help transform your house into the home of your dreams. Wayne Door, more than just garage doors, from the people you can trust. Back to Claymont High School, Big Z Sports, bringing you this district championship as we'll go down to the sideline, brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. Adam, you were in those timeouts. Yeah, I'll keep it simple, guys. Both coaches, they were stressing defense. Uh, Coach Tucci, he was uh, very adamant about uh, a couple of mistakes they made there in the first quarter, and uh, Martin Ferry was actually worried about getting set coming into the second quarter here. It was all defense. Thank you for that, Adam, as it's Malvern with the ball to start off this second frame. Barino has it, kicks corner. Miner, he's going to drive with the left, go in on Reese, kick out. Smith thought about a three, instead goes right side. Phillips, Phillips goes down low. Barino nearly lost the handle. He's locked up on defense with Williams. Barino tries to step back, shot, and how in the world did Jay Allen Barino get that one? He was blanketed by Williams. His first basket of the game. Ferry. Pushes it down quickly. Three-point shot from Booth's going to be too short. Reese and Barino collide. Barino strips him, but we're going to get a foul called here. And Coach Tucci thought maybe there could have been a charge as Reese went in hard to Barino. Instead, Reese is going to step to the first Federal Community Bank free throw line. Yeah, somebody from Melbourne better figure out how to get a body on him right now because, like you said, uh, Alex Reese just came flying in there and, and great job of getting the defense or offensive rebound. Yeah, as Reese makes that first foul shot, guys, I think Coach Tucci was more upset with who made the call. The guy standing by him over by the scorer's <laughs> table made the call instead of the guy that was under the hoop. Good eye on that, Adam, as Reese's next one is perfect as well. And we've got a tie ball game again from Uricksville. Of course, another big thank you to another or to all of our presenting sponsors from throughout the season in Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, Novellus. Altman Hospital and WM Commercial Roofing as Phillips is going to split the defense and kiss it off the glass for his first points. Dylan Phillips says, yeah, that'll work. Now here comes Ferry. Reese has it picked up by Barino. He'll go down to the corner. It's Booth left open for three, and it's good. Anthony Booth is buried two from deep, and Reese has his first assist. Well, if you want the Melvern press to back off a little bit, that's one way of doing it. Got to take advantage and hit your open shots. That's what Ferry's been doing. Hornets setting up on offense. It's Barino. He'll drive. 
Just inside the three-point line, he'll pull up. It was too long. Rebound into the hands of Ferry as it was Reese and Phillips who collided. Head coach Derek Edwards calling out the play rather adamantly, <laughs> making sure I think everybody knew what they were calling there. Here comes Ferry. Reese has the ball. Kicks to the corner. Working it out of the corner that time with Smith. He'll now go back up to Williams. Williams goes back to Smith. He'll jab step. Now we'll go to Reese. Reese going down baseline. Right around Miner. Both Miner and Reese fall. There's a three-point shot, and it's buried, and Elijah Smith has increased the lead to four. Again, the Hornets doing a good job helping off on Alex Reese. Alex just a great job with that assist, getting it to the open guy. Marino. Going to work on offense. Malvern finds themselves down by four here in the second quarter. There goes Smith. Good He'll pass. drive, finds Withrow off the glass, and that is the kind of play that you love to see out of Rodney Smith. Again, Jared Withrow's first points of the game. Great assist. There's a steal. There's a steal for Phillips. Can't cash in, though. Down the court. Here comes Ferry. Quickly in transition. Head fake. Nice job by Smith. He'll go in. Way too strong off the glass. Barino with the rebound, and we're going to get a foul as Smith locked up with Barino. How are you feeling there, Adam? It's uh, <laughs> exactly what we expected. One thing I've noticed, guys, since the start of the game, Ferry's doing a much better job with that press. If you notice, they would get through it, but then they would stall. Yes. They're keeping it going now, and they're not getting into those double teams where Malvern was forcing all those turnovers. Yeah, great point. 5.20 here in the second quarter. And there's going to be a steal as Miner threw it away and stepping in front of it is Booth. Fourth Malvern turnover. Here comes Ferry, and Coach Edwards wants a timeout. It's a Cush Financial Group timeout, and Big Z Sports will be back in 30 seconds. Ron Rug Automotive has been Malvern's one-stop automotive repair shop since 1999. Ron Rug Automotive is a Napa certified repair shop with ASC certified technicians. Ron Rug Automotive is able to handle any job from oil changes and tire replacements to installing Jasper engines and transmissions. They also offer boat, RV, and trailer repair. Learn more about Ron Rug Automotive by visiting the website ronrugautomotive.com or find Find them on Facebook. PAC Drilling Mobile Studio, 19 to 17. Martins Ferry leads Malvern in a Division Three East District Championship. As it was Coach Edwards who wanted that timeout, as it will be Purple Rider Ball. Want to give another big thank you again to Hartzler's Quality Housing, another one of the sponsors jumping on here. As what a ball game we've had thus far. Ferry looking to increase their lead, as it is going to be Reese going to work on minor kicks left side, finds Williams. Kind of in that elbow area, he'll go back out to Kroll, who's back in the game for the first time in a while. Reese double teamed, and he'll kick back out. Malvern's probably going to want to be trying to do as many doubles on him as they can, and Phillips gets the steal. Dylan Phillips, left block, makes space, and he scores, and it's a tie game again. Phillips, I think, about had it there of them just working the ball on the top of the key and said, hey, we're going to tie this game back up. Ferry breaks the press. Down they go. Boop. Trapped on the right block, kicks it up, Reese, he'll go up and he's blocked from behind by Miner, and he stepped on the baseline. Malvern ball, and that's a huge shot block down there from the big man. Yeah, Mitchell Miner again doing a good job, not swatting at the ball, stayed straight up. He knew he had the backboard to help him. Great job. Hey, uh, Adam, uh, you are like the tallest guy with Big Z Sports, and you look small next to Reese <laughs> and Miner locking yeah, up down there. I'll tell you there. what, though, that was a great, that, like you said, guys, that was a great job on that block. It was ba great body control, so there was no foul call. It was all ball. Of course, our trips to the sideline brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. It's 1919. You cannot ask for more from a district championship. Miner drives in, lost the handle, had to be saved by Swain, but they're going to say he stepped on the baseline. It's another turnover. That's the fifth for Malvern, and you saw that was that double team on Miner. He just couldn't find the angle for the pass. Well, and like Adam was talking at the end of the quarter, both coaches talked about defense, and you can really tell that is their focus tonight. It's going to take them to the end of this game. Let me tell you, if it wasn't enough for the packed house, just the intensity of this game, it's about 87 degrees in this gymnasium, <laughs> I'd say, right now. Here comes Ferry with the ball. It's Williams, gets it across the timeline, tipped away, steal. That one was Hutchison. He has it off the window and scores, and Drake Hutchison with a big-time play. His first takeaway. There. Ferry on offense. Reese, pull up, in the lane, and it's good. And Alex Reese... 
He might be 6'6", and he might like to wake his job and is living down on the baseline, but he's got a nice shot. Well, the big depth. difference right there, the last time down the court is that chest pass got intercepted. This is a beautiful bounce pass and went right to him. Phillips has the ball now. He'll go into it. His foot was on the line. That's not going to be for three as Reese grabs the miss, though. His fifth rebound down the court quickly. Booth has it. Booth off the right block and scores. Ferry has the lead again. Gives Anthony Booth eight points for the game. Hutchison, floater. It's good. What vision for Marino <laughs> to find him streaking his third assist. And Hutchison again <laughs> does not mind the height disadvantage. Marino jumps the pass, but it's going to stay with Ferry as jumping in front of it was Williams. He'll go down the court. It's Booth. He'll kick, go back out as Reese has it after Hutchison <laughs> got his hand on another one. Reese goes right side. Ball's worked around to the corner. Williams jab steps. Now he'll find Smith. Right in front of the Malvern bench. Handoff. Williams goes to Reese for three. It's good. Alex Reese, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, uh, he, uh, he's feeling it. There is no doubt tonight. Malvern is going to have Barino in the lane, and he shuffled the feet when he was down low. He had Reese in front of him, and that's going to be another Malvern turnover there, sixth. Went up and uh, came down with the ball. Yep, good call. I think Marino was asking the official. I think he thought that ball was held, forcing him to go back down. But I got to be honest, I didn't see it either, Stump. 26-23, Ferry leads. Tough defense again for Malvern. Ferry breaks the press into the game for the first time as Redinger. He'll go down to the left side, kick back out Williams. Williams picked up by Marino, and he'll hand it off into Reese's hands. Ferry slowing things down now, as it is going to be Barnett at the top. Barnett with two points so far in this game. Ball worked to Reese on the right side. He'll head fake the three, drives on minor, hop step, corner. Hutchison got his hands on it again, but it takes the fortunate bounce for Ferry. Three-point shot for Barnett's not going to fall. Smith's going to grab a rebound. Here comes Malvern. Smith in the lane, off the window, too strong. Marino put back, and one, and no. Instead, pardon me, I thought there was a charge there. It was Marino who scored, and he's going to be stepping to the line. I thought the official signaled for a charge there, Adam. No, it was definitely uh, contact on the putback. And, uh, that's one way to take care of Reese. As long as you're following the shot, he's out after the first play. Somebody else should be open to get the next one. Well, something tells me the wheels are turning down there for Coach Tucci with that little insight. Marino uses every part of the rim, and he gets it to fall. Be his fifth point all in the second quarter. And we're tied again. Minute 50 show, and it's the two-minute warning before the half. Ferry's trapped. Cross-court pass goes into the hands of Barnett in front of his bench. He'll drive. Pass to Reno. Lost the handle. Hutchison with the steal. Here comes Malvern. Smith off the window. Can't score. Another hustle rebound for Withrow. Can't get the right roll. It falls into his hands again. Smith somehow, Tom, somehow has it. He goes down hard as Barnett falls on him from behind. Smith gets up, though, thankfully, as that could have been a bad uh, bad fall there. Again, just great action on both sides of the head right now. What hustle. Some substitutions for Ferry as Kroll's coming back into the game, as well as Smith. Sitting for them will be Barnett and Redinger. You know, we're finding out this game again how important those trailers are on the court. We're seeing a lot of layups missed right now, and again, those tough rebounds with trailers coming in, putting it up. Malvern ball, Phillips goes low to Barino, and it is knocked away. Good hands by Kroll, and there was a height mismatch down there low as Barino was locked up one-on-one -on -one with Williams, but you know Reese was waiting in the wings. He wanted to send another one off the wall here at Claymont High School. Inbound, Smith hands off, Barino goes down low, nice dish off, Withrow off the window, can't score, ball goes back to the hands of Smith, baseline, pump fakes, he's trapped, has to find somewhere to go with it, he'll go Phillips, he'll go into a mid-range jumper, not going to fall, as it's Booth with the rebound. Still tied at 26. Ferry on offense, Reese brings it up, he'll hand off, Kroll, cross-court pass, Williams. Williams going to drive, finds Reese, who head fakes in the pass to the baseline. There was going to be an open three for Smith from the corner, but he passed up on it. Now Reese, double teamed by Withrow and Barino. Down low, they forgot about Kroll. He's wide open for the score. Yeah, you saw him sitting there actually for a few seconds right there, open, and uh, that trap was just not able to get it. 28-26, Purple Riders lead the Hornets again. Smith's going to drive and go back out. Barino gets the call from Coach Tucci. Malvern might hold for last shot unless they get a nice open look here. 
Withrow left alone at the top of the key. He'll pass. Barino's going to work. Iso ball. Reese on him. There's another rejection for Reese. Into the hands of Phillips. It's good and we're tied. Hey, Mom, look what I found as it goes right into the hands of Phillips. Ten seconds. Ferry comes down. Malvern fans wanted to travel. Step back. Three-point shot is buried. Elijah Smith pushes the lead to three. One second showing. Phillips steps into a three that hits off front iron. It almost fell. It's going to be Martins Ferry who leads 30 to 28 into the halftime break as we head to the DAC Vitamins and Minerals halftime report as Adam Sueski is going to try to catch up with head coach Derek Edwards for the Purple Riders, and sure enough, he's got him. Well, Coach, Division Three District Championship. Has it let you down yet? <laughs> expect anything different. Uh, this is just a dog fight. It's a battle we knew it was going to be. And we got two more quarters, possibly more, and, and you know, it's going to be a great game to, to, to coach, a great game to watch, and, and uh, we're going we're gonna to give it a heck. Absolutely. What's the message going to be? Play hard. Play hard. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. <laughs> Thank you for that, Adam. A very fired up Coach Edwards for Martins Ferry as we enter our DAC Vitamins and Minerals halftime report. Don't go anywhere. We're going to break down that first half of action and also try to get catch up with head coach Tucci for Malvern. 30 to 28. The Purple Riders lead this district championship. We're back after this. Roofing and Exterior Product Services of Ohio, or REPS, has serviced the roofing and construction industry since 1988. REPS and its team of professionals represent several of the major commercial roofing, continuous building insulation, exterior product, rain screen assembly, concrete, and waterproofing manufacturers in the Midwest. Their roofing, exterior, and waterproofing divisions work seamlessly together to help you create a complete building envelope. REPS is a proud supporter of Malvern Hornets Athletics and wishes them the best of luck in tonight's game. This is Jordan Hartzler. At Hartzler's Quality Housing, our goal is to help customers achieve the dream of home ownership. We have been a family-owned, affordable housing business for over 40 years. We value our customers and have the knowledge and experience to help you walk through the home buying process from start to finish. Conveniently located just off I-77 in New Philadelphia, stop by and browse their model homes or learn more by visiting Hartzler's.com. Pieces with Purpose is a custom apparel and decal shop located in Carrollton. They are devoted to promoting independence, purpose, and confidence for their family and community members facing developmental disabilities and the struggles those bring. They do this through custom apparel pieces, sports gear, and window vehicle decals. Pieces with Purpose offers vinyl, embroidery, screen printing, and digitally printed designs. See all Pieces with Purpose offers by visiting PiecesWithPurposeCustomTees.com. Pieces with Purpose is a proud supporter of the Malvern Hornets. Your local one-stop shop, Rockies, offering a full-service auto and truck repair shop at the Waynesburg location. You can schedule your appointment today by calling 330-866-5501. If you need a tow, they have that too. Stop into any of the three convenience store locations, Waynesburg, Malvern, or Minerva, to fill up the tank and enjoy a hot cup of coffee. Rockies has been family-owned for almost 50 years, and they would like to thank you for your continued support. And from everyone on Rockies' team, go Hornets! The Clark Kidder Real Estate Team is founded on trust, integrity, discretion, and a total commitment to maximizing the value of your home with 100% satisfaction. Working together, Robin and Melanie have found their diverse neighborhood knowledge and savvy business skills to be perfect complements in finding their clients the perfect fit in their home buying experience. To learn more, visit ClarkKitterTeam.CutlerHomes.com. The Clark Kidder Real Estate Team would like to wish the best of luck to the Malvern Hornets in tonight's game. The Contini Insurance Agency knows that shopping insurance isn't always fine, but they strive to make the experience a little less painful. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or recreational vehicles, as an independent insurance agency, they will make recommendations for the coverage you need at a price you can afford, with multiple companies and options available to best suit each situation. To learn more about the Contini Insurance Agency, visit ContiniInsurance.com. The Contini Insurance Agency is a proud supporter of Malvern Hornet Athletics. Fishman's Fresh Market IGA has provided residents in Malvern and Minerva the freshest quality products since 1954. The family-owned grocery store prides themselves on providing the communities with quality products, including their daily cut fresh meats, by their on-site butcher. Fishman's Fresh Market IGA is a proud supporter of community events and their local school districts and would like to wish the Malvern Hornets best of luck in tonight's game. See all Kishman's Fresh Market IGA offers by visiting kishmans.com. 
This is Brian Williams, commercial lender with the First National Bank of Denison. The day you decided to open your business, you planted the seed. As your roots become stronger, the First National Bank of Denison is here to help your business grow. Strong businesses make strong communities, and because we live, work, and raise our families here, your business benefits us all. Whether you need more space, equipment, or inventory, come see us today for your next business loan. We are a local bank with local decision makers, and your success is our greatest reward. At the First National Bank of Denison, we have our roots where others have their branches. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with AutoWorks Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, AutoWorks has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art Hunter Alignment System. Call 330-878-4223. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Let AutoWorks of Strasburg work for you. Time from Claymont High School in this Division Three East District Championship as it's the Martins Ferry Purple Riders who lead the Malvern Hornets 30 to 28. We're going to see if we can catch up with head coach Dennis Tucci when the Hornets do ultimately come out of their locker room. But Stump, could we have asked for anything more out of this game so far? I, I tell you what, this this has been an awesome game. Again, just the electric atmosphere. It, it, it's been actually kind of funny because during the game, it hasn't been that raucous. Almost everyone's kind of holding their breath right now with just kind of the nervous energy right now. So teams are going up and down. The kids are, are again, just, just busting their tails. And th this is as good as it gets. Got to appreciate both fan bases singing a little Sweet Caroline here from Uricksville as well. And that's probably good. We all needed to take a little bit breather after that, uh, <laughs> after that first half of action. By the way, I misspoke. I said it was Elijah Smith who buried it for three before the halftime break. Instead, he was only awarded the two as the uh, officials saw his foot on the line, so that makes it a two-point ball game, 32-28. Alex Reese has led the way for Martins Ferry with 13 big points. He's also got five boards, three assists, and two blocks. He has been doing a little bit of everything. Leading the way for the Malvern Hornets, it's kind of been – Committee scoring so far to this point is Jay Allen Marino. He's got himself five points to this point. So does Mitchell Miner. So overall, and uh, Dylan Phillips actually leads the way with six. They've been spreading the rock around pretty well. Well, that's one advantage that Adam was talking about. Again, if you have one of your scores from Malvern not scoring, you've got several others that can pick them up. And it looks like Adam will be getting head coach Tucci as we jump down to the sideline again, Adam. Well, Coach, Division Three championship game, you don't expect any less. You know, you're going to get a team's best on both sides, of the, both sides of the court. It looked like the guys were having trouble. They were getting good looks. They just weren't falling. Yeah, unfortunately, it's become a shooting contest, and we're not going to win that. They've made, they're making threes, we're shooting threes. It's a big difference there. I don't know what the, how many they've made. They made a bunch. We can't make one, so we have to turn up our defense and make sure we're getting points all that. We've got some. we got to get more. Well, good luck in the second right, half, thanks, Coach. Man. Thank you to Coach Tucci, and a thank you to Adam for getting those insights. Coach Tucci, always the uh, the realistic <laughs> coach, that's for sure. We're going to see what Malvern's adjustments are here after that first half. They only find themselves down by two. We'll see what Ferry does as well to handle that Malvern press, which did give them some problems occasionally, but it seemed like they got something clicking there. Yeah, it, again, but they struggled late in the second quarter with it, and, and it's just that when – when Martin Ferry moves, especially gets in the center court, they can break that. And like Adam said earlier, if they can turn and go to the basket and score, it kind of loosens that up. The minute they kind of fall back and hold that ball a little bit, they really start struggling with it. That will wrap up our DAC Vitamins and Minerals halftime report. Stay tuned. Second half of Division Three East District Championship Basketball, Malvern and Martin's Ferry. That's on the way with Big Z Sports. Live more comfortably this winter with the help of Unified Insulation Systems. Unified Insulation Systems is a full-service insulation and weatherization provider that can show you how to properly insulate your home or business. With good insulation from Unified Systems, you can prevent your gutters from freezing and get rid of your high-energy bills. Call Jeremiah Thomas today for your free quote at 330-773-7377 or visit unifiedinsulation.com. Call Unified Insulation Systems today, your most trusted name in insulation. 
Do you hunt, fish, sew, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sug with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 Littles with Bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. Championship basketball in both student sections having a great time. A little cha-cha slide <laughs> as we come back in out of our halftime report. It will be Ferry Ball. They lead 30 to 28. Of course, uh, thank you again to some of our sponsors who jumped on for today. Pieces with Purpose, Rockies Auto, and Clark Kidder Real Estate Team. As we are underway with the second half of basketball, everybody, if you got a seatbelt, you might want to make sure it's on. <laughs> it's going to be a ride as it's the Purple Riders who come up on offense. Williams trapped in the corner. He'll go down low. It's Reese going to work on Miner, trying to clear space. He's doubled. He'll kick out. Kroll for three. It's way long. It's not going to catch anything but the backboard. Nearly saved by the Ferry player, but it goes out of bounds. It will be Malvern Ball. You know, one of the things you look for when the teams come out of the second half, just the body language, and, and I'm really impressed just how relaxed both teams look right now. There's still a lot of confidence on both sides. It is Barino. He'll go to work in front of his bench. Kicks corner Smith back to him. Barino now goes to Miner. Pump fakes a three in the corner. He'll drive. Got some soft defense. Got that one way off the mark. Withrow battles through. Gets the offensive board. Smith puts it up. Short arms it. Battle for the rebound. It's going to fall into the hands of a ferry player in Williams. And now he'll lose the handle. Miner hustling. Williams tied up. He'll throw it down the court. Barino high points it and knocks it out of bounds. It will be Ferry Ball. And what a scramble there to start. You know, three shots, and we've just barely hit the rim once. <laughs> yeah, a lot of short-arming the shots this, so early. This is chaos at its finest here in the opening minute here in the third quarter. We love a little bit of chaos <laughs> in high school basketball, especially in the tournaments. Here comes Kroll. He's picked up by Barino. Barino denies. And he'll throw back out of it. Now Smith, he tries to pluck it away. He quite can't quite do it as Booth had it. Good strong hands. Goes Kroll down low. Reese around Miner. Dribbled it off his own leg. And it will be Hornet ball. Hey, great pass in there by Turner Kroll. Nice ball fake. Got it right to him. And uh, just unfortunately lost the handle. Sometimes the best passes are the hardest ones to handle. <laughs> Here comes Malvern. Marino brings it up. His team's down by two. Trip to Athens on the line in the OHSAA Boys Basketball Tournament. It's Phillips in front of his bench. He'll go with row, top of the key. Malvern sees Ferry fade off on defense. They know who's the shooters and who are not for Malvern. They'll go down low. Miner clears some space. Reese jumps on it. He'll have to throw it out. Phillips with a lot of contact, but he ignores it. And Dylan Phillips has got eight. Miner gets his first assist. Here comes Ferry in transition. Up and blocked from the side. Marino's got it, gets, gets it. Phillips tries to throw it back in. It goes into the hands uh, of a Ferry player, and Miner and Smith go up. They're going to get a foul on somebody. The last thing you can do is throw that ball back under the basket. Rule number one when you're playing young youth basketball, never, ever do that, and it, well, it backfired for Melvin. If you're going to throw it, throw it towards your basket, not their basket. Yeah. <laughs> So stepping to the first Federal Community Bank free throw line will be Elijah Smith. He rattles in the first one. Also, that sequence, that was easy for me to say, right? <laughs> Smith readies himself. His team now leads by one after he cashed in the first time off the charity stripe. His next one's perfect as well. 32 to 30 as Smith now finds himself with seven points for the Riders. It's been a good, clean ball game to this point. Nobody more than one foul on either team right now. It is Phillips. He'll go out to the right side. Smith works it to Miner, who's in the right corner. He'll drive, lost the handle, actually picked it up. He'll go to Barino. Malvern trying to be patient, get a good shot on offense. Barino drives on the right block. Baseline find a withrow off of his hands, and it's a turnover as Malvern had that look. 
as there was almost the potential there that time for another one of those baseline throws, yeah. but Withrow just couldn't handle it. You just you just said it again. Great pass. Kind of surprised him again. Hard one to handle. So Ferry has the ball there trapped in the backcourt as that Malvern defense, but Ferry blocks, gets through it again, and there's going to be a steal as Barino knocks it away into the hands of Phillips. Barino second, down the court. Smith in the lane for two. Now more pressure from Malvern. Smith steals it. Underhand pass. Barino can't score, but he's stepping to the line. It'll be Elijah Smith and his second fall to him right now. And Barino misses wide left on his first free throw. Down to Adam, brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. And Adam, that is the sequence that Malvern's going to need a lot of times to get themselves a lead. Yeah, absolutely, guys. I just thought it was odd. Ferry really struggled with that press those two, two, those two times. They handled it the entire uh, first half. There was a nice rebound for Withrow on the offense, but Phillips leaves the three short, as it will be Ferry Ball. Withrow, great job on offensive rebounds. There's going to be another Ferry turnover as they throw it away on the baseline, and all of a sudden, well, the Hornets on pressure. What is turning that, it up. The, the third turnover, just trying to get it across half court? It is, and it is actually their 12th turnover overall, yeah. if you can believe it. Malvern's got seven themselves. Here comes Barino, kicks right side. Phillips in front of his bench. He'll go Smith in the corner, and that one's poked away. Booth knocked it out of bounds, stays with the Hornets. Tie so, ball game, five minutes showing here in the third. Both sides of this ball, you cannot be lazy, lazy with the ball right now. They, uh, both teams will get it. Have either of these teams taken a breath yet? Wow. Marino going to work. He wants the offense. He's barking it out to Withrow, who will set the screen. He'll drive, looks for space. Reese tipped it, goes baseline. What a find! Rodney Smith for two! Barino's fourth assist, and now we're going to have it was Smith who was trying to draw the charge. Could not do it as Reese collided with him. So it will be Ferry Ball as teammates for Reese help him up off the court. Hard collision. Yeah, he's, he's a little dazed on this one. A little shaken up, and it looks like Coach Edwards wants a timeout. It's a Cush Financial Group timeout. We'll take it with him. Big Z Sports is back after this. The certified public accountants at Needenthal & Company believe in the value of relationships. Needenthal & Company has been in business for over 50 years in your community, helping individuals and businesses grow. Needenthal & Company can help manage and prepare your payroll, plan your estate, and prepare your business and personal income taxes. Stop in to the Needenthal facility on North Wooster Avenue in Dover and become a valued client today. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. into the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio. It is the Malvern Hornets who lead 35-32 to over the Martins Ferry Purple Riders Division Three East District Championship action, and it has been a good one. Thanks for tuning in with Big Z Sports, whether it's on 99.9 or on our YouTube channel as Ferry's got the ball. Riders go down quickly, block from behind Marino, and Reese hustles in front of it and grabs the ball again for Martins Ferry. He'll drive, kick left side, three-point shot from Smith. Not going to fall. Miner with a beautiful box out. That was textbook right there. Barino goes careening in, and it's going to go out of bounds. They're going to say it just went straight out of bounds. No foul or anything called. As we'll go down to Adam Sueski and Adam, ton of contact down low. Nothing called. Yeah, I'm uh, a little shocked right now. I got uh, <laughs> okay. Now I can say a little bit more. <laughs> there was an awful lot of contact. I was waiting for a block or a charge call. Down to Reese. Miner gets the block, but they're going to call the foul. Miner has his hand straight up in the air thinking, you guys got to be kidding me, I didn't hit him. But they're going to say he caught the wrist. So, Reese will step to the free throw line. Reese so far in this game, he's four for four from the charity stripe. That is a part of his 13 big points, but he has been held scoreless through this first four minutes of the second half. And no more as he drills the first one. That was one of those ones stumped that it left his hand and it looked good. <laughs> he's got a, a very smooth shot. Especially for a big man in high school basketball, sometimes you do not see that. 
as Reese seemed to be all right after that timeout from Coach Edwards. He was kind of grabbing at his leg, but got back up with no problem. He knocks down his sixth in six tries from the free throw line, and guess what? We're tied again. Imagine that. Here comes Malvern. It's Hutchison who go between his legs. He's picked up by Reese. Goes right side. Phillips, and there's going to be a foul. Barnett had the arm up over the top of the shoulder of Phillips, and they're going to get that every time. Be his second foul. Still not a lot of foul trouble for either side. Like you said, it has been a mostly clean game to this point. Hutchison, there's a kickball as Barnett jumps the lane. Phillips was going to be open. Might have thought <laughs> about taking it up from three. So far, Malvern's not had a lot of success from deep. Hutchison. Uh, Coach Tucci talked about it. Again, a lot, lot of good shots, just can't get him to fall. Swain picked up on defense there by Booth. He'll have to get rid of it from the corner as he was trapped on the sideline. There's an interior pass to Barino. He'll muscle through. Got three players up on the pump fake. He couldn't score, but he's fouled from behind. Let's see, we called this on. He could have picked probably three guys. <laughs> Looks like they pick Alex Reese, his first foul. Well, for Martins Ferry, they're thinking, no, not him. Don't call the foul on him, but it is just his first. That would be the uh, third team. Both teams actually have three in the third quarter. As Barino steps to the first Federal Community Bank free throw line, he knocks down the first. He was only one for three before that, and they know they're going to want him to make more of those shots at the freebie line. That gives the Hornets a one-point lead. As the next one from Barino used all the rim, and it fell. Hey. Doesn't have to look pretty every time, just has to go in. Down the sideline, Ferry Ooh. breaks the press. Here goes Boot, Euro step. Miner Great with the block. Defense. What height there for Miner as he just stayed right up with him. Now, here comes Malvern in transition. Rhythm three, Phillips. No good, off front iron, battle for the rebound into the hands of Barnett. Here comes Ferry as they'll slow things back down there. Probably the wise move there after we've seen a couple of turnovers and just some jumpiness here from the start in this second half for Ferry, but they're only down by two. Interior pass to Reese. He goes to work on Miner. Spin around, shot is good, and I really don't know what else Miner could have done on defense there. Yeah, he's got a couple inches on him, almost a baby hook shot, and you're absolutely right. Great defense, just better offense. Tie ball game. Phillips, head fake. Now he'll drive. It's blocked by Booth into the hands of Phillips, who can't cash in. Oh, my goodness, that one. Phillips wants back. Here comes Ferry, head fake, on the drive. Hard foul from Swain. It's not going to fall, but he's going to step to the line is Elijah Smith. Again, good foul by Eric Swain right there. Had an easy layup right there, and, and you want him, you know, Elijah Smith to earn these both from the free throw stripe. Smith so far is two for two from the free throw line. 2.41 showing in the third. First one all around the rim won't fall as Smith hit it off front iron, then it hit left, then it hit back iron, and it went out. It's Malvern's fourth team foul uh, this quarter, so a 2.41 remained in the third. Purple Riders will be shooting two free throws. There's the next one, and it is buried that time, and it's a one-point lead for the Purple Riders. Here comes Hutchison. He'll bring it up with the right once Perino to give him a screen. Instead, Hutchison's going to step into a three, clangs off front iron. He'll follow his shot and get it back. He'll go to Swain. Now it's worked around. Smith has it in the left side. He'll drive, spin around on the left block. He's trapped, has to go out high to Miner. Miner skies over the defender. He'll go to Hutchison. Hutchison drives, gives Swain. He'll go for a rhythm three, and it won't fall again. And Smith tries to go up, and they're going to say he went up over the back of Smith. Smith foul Smith. How about that? <laughs> Hutch yeah, that was a nice job of boxing out there. And, didn't, and again, got the foul on, on Rodney Smith. Yeah, the problem there, guys, Rodney Smith, they were kind of out in the open there. It was very easy to see. Rodney put his hand on his back. The official was standing right there. That was an easy call. And that's his third right now, too, and that's going to give uh, the Purple Riders two free throws. And now we have a whistle down here, and, yeah, it will be the two free throws. As I wasn't sure what the officials were discussing there at first. And are we going to have a problem here with... We are, because oh. this is where the, the controversy there always comes go. in, change of possession. I've seen it go both ways here, where it's shooting and it's not shooting, I even though it is the fifth foul. I think they're trying to get Alex Reese on the free throw line, saying he's the one that got fouled, when in reality it was Anthony Booth, number 12. Booth has not taken a shot from the free throw line, but he is perfect on his first. That will increase the ferry lead to two. That's his first point of the third quarter, nine for the game. 
course, a big thank you again to Contini Insurance as well as Kishman's IGA for jumping on for today's broadcast as Booth is good for his second free throw. Back to a three-point lead now for the Riders. Barino goes to Smith. Defense all over him in Booth. Malvern faithful wanted a foul. Smith's going to drive, pull up, floater off the window and scores. <laughs> yeah, that had the right English on it as Rodney Smith gets his 10th point. Back to a one-point game. Ferry breaks the press. Barnett dribbles it off of his own leg. There was no defense on him. Barino's going to get credit for the steal. Dish is low. Smith off the window. Can't score. Barino stays with it. Pump fake. Gets Reese up. <laughs> Foul. And one. <laughs> Jay Allen Barino <laughs> says, I don't care if you're 6'6 six, six or not. I'm putting this in. I tell you, great patience by Jay Allen right there. Pump faked it once, pump faked it twice, went up the third time and strong and right into his body. And I think what Edward, Coach Edwards for the Riders is upset about is the fact nobody came down and crashed and helped. It was just Reese on Barino. Barino, off front iron, won't fall. Smith with the hustle rebound. Malvern ball, Barino drives, kicks out Smith. He'll go to minor for, for three, it's left short. Offensive board, Hutchison saves it to Smith off of a ferry player, and it's going to stay with Malvern. There's your hustle plays that come in to pay dividends. Man, if you are Coach Edwards, the lack of boxing out on free throws right now, that's the second one of the third quarter that I can recall that they've gotten the offensive rebound off a of missed free throw. Smith's going to take a seat and withrows back in for Malvern. It is Hornets ball. One and a half showing in the third. Coach Tucci calls out the offense. Next ferry foul will automatically put Malvern at the line as well. Malvern taking it slow on offense. Barino backed up to half court. And guarding him is going to be Williams, who is eyes locked in on the chest of Barino, <laughs> saying you're not going anywhere. But we've seen how quick that first step is from Barino. He's doubled. He'll go in, interior, Hutchison down low, finds Withrow, left block, he'll go back out. Probably the wise move is Reese is down there and he's already got a multitude of shot blocks. Barino goes to Hutchison, lost the handle, but he'll save it in front of his own bench. Hutchison, floater in the lane, and it will fall! Drake Hutchison is so quick on that pull-up floater that Reese can't get down there quick enough. Now Ferry in transition. Barino with the great defense, might have even got a tip on Smith. Withrow's got the rebound. Here comes Malvern, Barino, baseline, Hutchison, it's good! Barino's fifth assist, and Hutchison, he's got himself eight. Five-point lead, that's the biggest since the start of the game for Malvern. Trapped, Hutchison nearly got the steal. Here goes Reese, around Miner, shot in the lane, rattles in and out. With the Rose eighth rebound, Barino slows it down. 14 seconds showing, gonna hold for last shot. He'll work to the right corner, down low, minor, double. Looking for somebody, goes low, with throw up and under, can't score, puts it off the glass, still can't <laughs> score. Miner's got it, puts it up and good. <laughs> At the buzzer, Mitchell Miner makes it a seven point game. <laughs> On to the fourth quarter for the Division Three East District Championship. Hornets lead the Purple Riders, and we'll be back after this. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at packdrilling.com. The Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers want you to know that low-fat chocolate milk is a great choice for student-athletes and hard workers. It provides the nutrition needed after practices, games, or a hard day at work, and it tastes great. Low-fat chocolate milk is packed with carbohydrates for energy, proteins to repair muscles, fluids to rehydrate, plus vitamins and minerals to help build strong bones and bodies. It's the official beverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers. Farms. Family. Food. Drilling Mobile Studio and out of this Cush Financial Group timeout. We'll go down to Adam Sawesky brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. A little scary there for Malvern. Mitchell Miner came up limping, but he seems fine. Yeah, it looked like, uh, looks like he came off the bench fine. He was actually ready to go back in. It's one of those uh, inadvertent deals. 
where I think he just uh, rolled it a little bit, but uh, yeah, obviously he's ready to go back in. And he's frustrated, you can tell. But regardless, he had a huge putback shot there to give his team the seven-point lead heading into the final frame. Huge thank you to all of our sponsors jumping on for today's game as well as our presenting sponsors from throughout this winter season. On to the final eight minutes. It is Malvern Ball. Barino goes to work, trying to increase the lead. He dribbles with the right. He'll go around the defense. Puck fake to Reese. What a dish off to Withrow who rattles it in. Withrow's now got four. Barino's got six assists. Like you said, great assist right now. Everyone thought he was going to shoot it. Great assist. Kroll tries to go up. Nothing there. He'll kick back out. Williams thought about a three. Instead goes to Booth. He'll drive. Goes to the lane. Reese goes up. Hard foul underneath as they're going to say it was Smith who got him with the body. And Smith cannot believe it. He thought he had positioning. It's going to be Rodney's fourth foul if it's on him. Oh, boy. And sure enough, it, it is. is. And that is big for Malvern because Smith's got 10 points and five steals. He has been doing a little bit of everything for Malvern. Looks like Miner's set to check back in. We'll see if he comes in for Smith. That would be quite the uh, height lineup for Malvern as the first one from Alex Reese is good. He's now 7-for-7 seven seven from the first Federal Community Bank free throw line. And sure enough, with or pardon me, Miner is in for Smith. Reese readies himself for another free throw. He'll put it up, and he is good again. Eight for eight, Stump. Hey, I tell you what, being that size and, and moving it inside so well, again, that is a one, one weapon inside right now. Barino brings it up across the timeline. He'll go through his legs to the left. Now he'll work right. Drives right block, goes in. Nice dish off underneath. Phillips can't score. He gets the offensive board, though, and kicks out to Miner. That's another hustle play. Malvern finds themselves up by seven, and it's plays like that. Even though Phillips couldn't cash in, he followed the shot, stayed with it, and it went into his hands. Again, second half, Malvern's getting all the 50-50 balls right now. Hutchison had it stripped, <laughs> and it went, somehow went to the hands of Phillips. I have no idea how. He'll drive, go Barino, right block, pump fake, goes low, Withrow, off the window and scores again, and Jared Withrow coming to life on offense. Jay Allen Barino's got them all hopping all inside that paint right now and having some great assists. You think he's smiling down there every time he does it when he sees <laughs> three players go up in the paint against him. He's got seven assists. Kroll goes out. Williams for three. It's going to go short. Phillips tips it to Miner. And for Phillips, that's his fifth rebound. And now Malvern might slow it up here just a little bit, leading by nine. Hutchison nearly lost the handle, but he'll retain possession. He'll drive, and he'll go right into the chest of Booth, who knocked it away from him, but it stays with the Hornets. Biggest lead they've had all game at nine. One thing Malvern does so well is that stall game a little bit. Takes a lot of time on offense. Barino goes back out to Phillips, and there you go again, killing a little bit more time. Phillips between the legs, goes left, gets a screen from Withrow, and they dish back out to Hutchison. That in-and-out game for Malvern. Killing some clock, and you know if they get an open look here and they can push it to double digits, they're going to take it. Hutchison's wow. blocked from the side. It was ripped away by Tevin Williams. Down the court, Kroll tiptoes the sideline. Now he'll drive baseline. Goes down low, cross court, head fake pass there from or from Smith, as instead he'll pass it out. Williams, reach around, steal from behind. Hutchison in the lane, and it's good. Malvern leads by double digits. Drake Hutchison, maybe not making him hurt too bad in terms of the three-point shooting, but he is turning it up on defense. And right now an 11-point lead with five, a little over five minutes to go, and this Melbourne defense is hard. Can you hear the Malvern <laughs> faithful behind us? Pass low to Reese for Ferry. Pulls up. Marino blocks it, but they're going to say he fouled him. He did good until he followed through, and he did hit him. If he had just gone straight up, it would have been great. Barino had the clean block, but sure enough, his momentum carried him right into Reese. Yep. Reese is back to the free throw line, already eight for eight. Hey, guys, prior to those steals, I want to just touch on what the Hornets are doing down here. Getting Barino into the post against Reese, he's a smart enough player and has enough court awareness. He's drawing that double team, but knows where his teammates are at giving Witherow those easy lay-ins for the easy points. And credit to the rest of the Hornets team for knowing where to go yep. on the court, too. Yep. That's that's just great teamwork, great chemistry, great coaching all around. Yep. Reese was good on the first. He's good on the second as well. Make him 10 for 10 from the free throw line. Jay Allen just crossed the 1,000-point score, but we're seeing tonight, again, it's not about points with him. It's a complete player. Phillips down the court quickly, goes to minor for three, left it short. Withrow, board, puts it up, block. Withrow again. Kicks out, Barino thought about three, instead he'll drive, he'll go up. Wrong angle shot and somehow, Barino went up with the wrong hand and still got him to score. By the way, Rithrow now 
10 rebounds. Yeah, we, we talked even before the game started right now, again, how Malvern can just, once they push the gas, can just floor it, and they are doing a great job this quarter. Reese, touch pass, corner, not going to fall. Reese grabs the rebound, though. He'll put it up from the free throw line, and it's good again. Oh, my goodness, Alex Reese. Timeout on the court brought to you by Cush Financial Group. Malvern leads 54-45. District championship action returns after this. This is Carly Mills. At First Federal Community Bank, our mission is to empower the financial well-being of our community one person at a time. Through integrity and quality, we earn the trust of our customers and exceed their expectations. First Federal Community Bank, investing in our community since 1898. Serving your banking needs in Dover, New Philadelphia, Eurexville, Sugar Creek, Berlin, and Mount Hope. First Federal Community Bank, member FDIC. Malvern leads Martins Ferry. And I got to say a big thank you to all of our sponsors who have joined us for today's broadcast. You'll be seeing them throughout the broadcast as well. Without all of them, we are unable to bring you today's presentation. The Hornets looking to punch their ticket to Athens and capture the district championship. They've got the lead up to nine, and it is thanks to no short in part to some hounding defense, and right now some real smart offense from the Hornets has got them back out in front. Well, like Coach Tucci said, they were not very strong from the outside in the first half, and we've seen that adjustment the second half where they are pounding it inside and really attacking the paint. Gavin Little's on the court for the first time for Ferry as Malvern works it in and out again. Hutchison. He's picked up. They go with throw in the corner. He'll go. Phillips, who's cutting. He'll pump fake. Now goes back out to Hutchison. There's that clock killing game again from the Hornets. Very smart up by nine, especially if they can get a good bucket here. And a lot of teams can't do this, and, and Melbourne does a very good job. And Elijah Smith kind of got frustrated and came up and did the kind of the reach around from behind as he gets the foul. Hey guys, the downside for Ferry right now, you try to get, to get Malvern into those double teams with pressure, well, you're doing it against a team that does that all the time. They're doing that. They're doing it in practice all the time. You're doing that against a team that's mastered it. Yeah, so, so it's going to be very difficult to force a turnover against these Hornets. Marino doubled. He'll go in deep. Miner finds a cutting with throw. He'll go on the left block and go back out as Reese was on him, and there's going to be a backcourt. Withrow threw it just a little bit too long, and it was neither Phillips nor Barino who could sky to get it. There's a turnover for Malvern as Withrow taps his chest and says, my bad, guys. Again, if you're Coach Tucci, you're really frustrated, but you took almost 45 seconds off the game clock right there. The other thing Martin Ferry's got to think about right now, do we start fouling, put him on the free throw line? They only got one foul this quarter with 339 remaining. Well, I almost wonder if that's why Smith fouled when he did. For Ferry, as it's Williams, he'll go to Booth. Booth kicks right side to Smith. Smith gets the screen from Reese. He'll work it. Now he'll go to Reese down right side, and they're going to say Mitchell Miner with the shove. And we can see from down here as uh, it was Reese going baseline, he got those arms a little too far extended out, Stump. Yeah, again, just didn't quite move the feet fast enough. And again, the, the Melbourne fans aren't going to like it, but yeah, good call, though. He did take both hands and kind of do the two-arm chuck. You can kind of get away if you use the forearm to get the space as Reese pulls up, and he was well short. Miner. Had some good defense there. Barino, that's just his third rebound, believe it or not. As Barino goes down, we're going to get a foul called as Williams is going to get called for the foul. You saw Barino whip around, and he <laughs> said, you are not about to say I charged into him. And sure enough, it goes on Ferry. It's almost the exact same foul. Again, just didn't quite move the feet fast enough. Did the two-arm chuck. And again, actually good foul for Martins Ferry. Had an, uh, Jay Allen had an easy layup. Barino up and under around Reese. Can't score offensive board. And Jay Allen Barino's got 13. Hustle rebounding. That's been the name of the game for the Malvern Hornets. Remember the Needenthal and Company key to the game there, Stump? Crash the offensive glass and look what it's doing. Kroll on the baseline, too long. Reese, good box out, tips it to a teammate who will throw it into the hands of the Hornet, but it was Smith who touched the sideline when he was trying to get that rebound right into the Malvern, or right into the Malvern faithful, I should say. We talked at the beginning of the game what an advantage Malvern would have because of the extended bench, and right now I think you're starting to see that. Malvern looks very fresh right now. Mark's Ferries, they're hunched over. They got their hands on their knees. They are very tired right now. Well, it was interesting because Coach Edwards said in the pregame, we were going to try to go a little bit deeper on our bench, but overall they have not subbed in a whole bunch of guys. Nice inbound to Barino over the top. He'll try to throw it through the baseline, and I thought that one was tipped. 
and they're going to say no as it's going to be ferry ball. I don't know how that wasn't tipped. We're going to have a communication down there by the officials, and they'll get it right as they overturn the call there, and we'll go down to Adam happen in front of him on the baseline. Right call. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like seeing the officials work together on that because this official that was behind the play saw it much easier than the one in front. So it is Malvern ball. They're up by 11, 245, looking to try to get a dagger shot here to give themselves a big lead. And to that point, Adam, these officials have done a great job tonight's game. It hasn't gotten out of control. They've called a very consistent game on both sides. There's Malvern again, just working through those double teams from Ferry, chewing more clock, keeping that lead. Phillips is poked from behind by <laughs> Booth, but he kept hold of it. Now Barino drives, and there's a foul from Williams. That again, I think what to your point, Stump, those are intentional because they're trying not to get any more clock runoff. Yeah, you only got 222 left right now. That's only your third team foul at this point, and down by 11. You know, my only question is, though, if that's your thought process, why'd you let them run 30 seconds off the clock? Uh, good point. So it's Hutchison, who have it in the backcourt, and he'll drive, and there's going to be a foul. It's going to be on Barnett, so that brings him to four team fouls. Next one puts Malvern at the line. Given that the Hornets have struggled a bit tonight from the free throw line, this isn't necessarily a bad idea this early. Yeah, they have not had too many free throws tonight, and they got to be around, I would say, about 50% at the free throw uh, line. Try at this less point. than that. Three, it? three for eight, believe uh. it or not. Marino goes right through a double team and kicks back out to Hutchers. I have never seen a player dribble through a double team and look as unbothered as Barino just was there. There's going to be the 15th foul this quarter. It's going on Barnett, and it's going to send Hutchison to the line. And that's Maurice Barnett's fourth foul. Next one, and he will be gone, but it looks like he's probably going to sub out here as I think it will be Gavin Little back in the game for the Purple Riders. Jared Withrow is going to come back in the game. Not sure who he's going to come in for. The other thing I'm kind of waiting to see is when Coach Tucci is going to put Rodney Smith back in with his four fouls because he's still – he's actually had an extended break on the bench. Hutchison is good on his first one. He's now one for three, and Swain's going to sit. It's Withrow coming in for him for a little bit more rebounding. I got to say, Jared Withrow's done a great job class, uh, crashing the boards tonight. He actually leads all players with ten rebounds. And that is a huge piece of this game. There's going to be a free throw good from Hutchison. He's now two for four. And that pushes the lead to its biggest of the night, 13. Ferry breaks through the pressure. They go to Booth for three. And it's good again. Timeout, Coach Edwards. Ferry's still got a lot of fight in him. We'll be back after this Cush Financial Group timeout. Finding your perfect vehicle can be frustrating. The selection process, working out a deal, the pushy salespeople. Well, Sarsha and Ford of Waynesburg takes away all of those frustrations by offering transparent pricing, a large new and pre-owned inventory, and salespeople that you'll consider a friend by the time your sale is complete. Sarsha and Ford of Waynesburg is proud to have won the Ford President's Award three consecutive years based solely on that customer satisfaction. And you can see the difference at 300 West Lisbon Street in Waynesburg or at sarshanofwaynesburg.com, where community and customers always come first. Jeff Wallach LLC is a family-owned and operated company proudly serving greater Northeast Ohio and surrounding communities for over 25 years. We specialize in vinyl siding, replacement windows and doors, gutters, downspouts, and much more. We provide quality service regardless of the size or scope of the project. Our crews are reliable, respectful, and mindful of a safe work environment. Jeff Wallach LLC is certified by the Better Business Bureau. Call today and discover how we can assist you in making your vision a reality. Back in again to Claymont High School. Two-minute warning in the fourth quarter. Malvern leads 58-48. District championship trip to Athens in the regionals is on the line. The Hornets bring it up, and there's a quick foul as it's going to be Hutchison back to the line. And like Adam Sueski said during that break, this is about to be the longest two minutes of basketball you've ever seen. The one thing is, though, Adam, Ferry will run out of players at some point. And speaking of that, that is the fifth foul of the ball game. there for, I missed it. Who was it who went Maurice off the court? Barnett. Maurice Barnett. Yep. Yeah, and actually, I was just going to tell you guys, I was in those huddles, and Coach Tucci was working on the inbound play, which, from his reaction, I don't think was executed the way it was supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> and Coach Edwards, all he was talking about was how you have to go for the ball. If you don't get it, you got a foul. So, Ferry, the Purple Riders, they did what they were supposed to do. Again, a big thank you to Adam and TMK Valley Propane for their work on the sideline tonight, and there was a – I think there was a disagreement on how many fouls Barnett actually had because the officials just talked it out, but Barnett stayed seated, so I'm going to guess his night is done. As Hutchison was good on the first run from the first Federal Community Bank free throw line, his next one's good as well, and Hutchison hitting some clutch free throws here late puts the team back up by 12. Here comes Reese across the timeline. 
He'll drop step. He'll go right. Puts it up off the backboard. No good. Withrow with another rebound. Imagine that. Here comes Hutchison across the timeline. Goes to Phillips. I was going to say Reese might have got away with a bit of a carry there, but it didn't matter. The shot did not fall anyway. Barino now clear in space, and there's a foul from behind by Williams. Actually, foul from Williams. We got a whistle from both sides. And it's I a think. Foul on Dylan Phillips, I think. He kind of held Drake Hutchinson. Well, not Dylan Phillips. It'd be Gavin Little, or no. No, I think they called no, two fouls, Tevin, actually. Tevin Williams. Oh, did they say. Well, they might have. So, yeah, because. Because I saw Drake Hutch, they were just cold at him, I think, trying to follow him. I think the far official called that one. This official called. How does that work? I yeah. don't think I've seen that. I don't know. Well, we'll see if that's what the case is as Barino's at the line and he clangs the first one off front iron. He is just three for seven from the charity stripe tonight. That's about the only thing he hasn't done well tonight. <laughs> Pretty much. Next one from Barino is off back iron. No good. Hustles for his own rebound. Up and under. Can't score. Oh, if Barino knocked that one down, this place was about to erupt. Here comes Ferry through the press. Williams, right side. He'll go low. Reese, Withrow, picked him up. Reese goes into the mid-range, off the right side. No good. Kroll with the offensive board, and he's Johnny on the spot. And Turner Kroll, Kroll's got his fourth point of the game. It's a Cush Financial Group timeout as it is Malvern leading 60-50. to 50. Big Z Sports will be back in 60 seconds. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Hi, this is Jan McInturf. For the past 30 years, the residents in and around Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff at McInturf Realty for buying and selling of residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all those communities, there's nothing better than high school basketball. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season and make the call to McInturf Realty at 330-364-SOLD or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. Welcome back in as it's the East District Championship out of Division Three for high school boys basketball. Malvern leads by 10. Hutchison dribbles right through the tight defense from Ferry. And Phillips is going to get fouled as it's Gavin Little who picks up, I believe, would be his first foul, and it is. And that will send Phillips to the free throw line. Again, except for Jay Allen's last set, you were four for four up to that point. First one from Phillips is good. And Dylan Phillips, guys, has had, in terms of the stat line, maybe you'd call it a quiet game. Right now he's got nine points. He's got five rebounds, two steals, and two assists. I feel like Phillips has been kind of a steady hand leading this team. When you go down the Malvern list right now, there's so many guys that have contributed in important ways. Well, I jinxed him because he missed the next free throw. <laughs> but regardless, it puts his team up by 11. Here comes Reese across the timeline. He'll go with the left. He'll get a screen. He'll dish right side. It's Kroll. Ferry does not have a lot of time to set up an offense. They're down by 11, and it's under a minute to go. Malvern locking up on defense. No easy shots. They'll go to Williams. He'll go right side to Reese. The Malvern faithful get behind their defense. Now Reese is going to step up and dribble left and right for a three-pointer that's not going to fall. Jared Withrow is going to grab the rebound, and Malvern looks like they're going to dribble this out as Ferry's going to wave the white flag. 61-50. The Malvern Hornets are going to be the Division Three East District champions as the celebration has already started from Claymont High School. I tell you what, what an impressive win. Maybe not Malvern's best game that first half, but, man, did they come out fire in the second half. That is an important element. You're going to make a run all the way to the end. I got to say, that's a kind of a sign of ultimate respect right there from Ferry, who stayed in this game, swing for swing for Malvern. They looked up at the clock, they looked at the time left, they got that last defensive stand, and they said, you know what, Hornets? You were the better team tonight. You go on now to Athens. Yeah, if you're Martin Sperry, you, you can't hang your head there. They played a great game. That was an awesome game tonight to watch. Both teams battled to the end. Like you said, Malvern just a little bit better team right now. 
Hold on to your shorts if you're a Melbourne Hornets fan. You got a good team going to make a good run. 61 to 50, your final score, and the Hornets are once again district champions. And my goodness, that might be, in my opinion, one of the games that we have seen Malvern have to fight the hardest, scrap the most, and overcome the most. And boy, did they do it in style, as they are the Division Three East District champions. As Adam Sueski is going to try to catch up with head coach Dennis Tucci down there as his team's about set to grab their medals and their award for the East District Championship. There's Adam now with Coach Tucci. Well, Coach, I didn't talk to you first going into the locker room, and you know why that is. But guess what? I'm talking to you after the game, yeah. and you know what that's about. That's a good one, isn't it? That's good. Yeah, I was proud of my guys. Our defense in the second half was tremendous. Once we got the lead, we're pretty good at protecting it, made a couple foul shots, finally calmed them down from the three. We make, making shots. Proud of my guys, though. You know, you always talk about you have to handle adversity. Well, something that never gets talked about is how you handle success. And them boys right there in those fancy white uniforms all year long have handled success. And that's hard to do. Sometimes that's harder to do than adversity because if you're any kind of competitor, your back's against the wall. You come out fighting. <laughs> but when you're successful, sometimes a lot of guys get a little feel good about themselves. This team stayed grounded, and they kept looking forward to the next one. That's why I'm proud of them. And you know you're going to get some everybody's best every time you take the court. Absolutely. We sure did, and tonight was no exception. Down at half, come back and win. Congratulations, Thanks, Coach. Thanks, I appreciate it. You don't, you don't think he's excited, do you, Adam? I, I don't know if excitement even <laughs> begins to summarize it. Yeah, I think, uh, I think he's been awaiting that interview for uh, – <laughs> At least a few years now. <laughs> 61 to 50, Malvern picks up the victory over Martins Ferry in the Division Three East District Championship. For the boys, stick around because on the way, we got your Dumont Sporting Goods postgame show. And stay tuned because we're going to have our Mac and Turf Realty player of the game as the Hornets receive their trophies here tonight from Claymont High School. Big Z Sports will return after this. Reduce your energy costs and get rebates up to $400. Fad here for TMK Valley Propane. The Ohio Propane Council offers Ohio residents rebates for installing new propane water heaters and furnaces. Heck, even licensed installers can receive incentives for installation. Visit OhioPropaneRebates.com. This public service announcement is brought to you by your friends at TMK Valley Propane. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. Altman is here for you, in your community, because you matter. We're proud to be the area's first and only independent health system. We are one team, joined together, and committed to one mission, to lead our community to improved health. And we've always been here, dedicated to providing you with the very best in care, wellness, education, insurance, and more. For your community and for your family, Altman is always here for you. Hi, I'm Zach Moteis with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this winter. Are you neglecting your building's fifth wall? Did you know something as simple as a clogged drain can lead to a destructive roof leak? Protect your business assets with WM Commercial Roofing's Umbrella Care program. This program will provide you with regular maintenance surveys and repairs to extend the life of your roof. Invest in your business with our top quality materials, advanced techniques, and skilled craftsmanship. Are you ready for a reliable partnership? Visit our website, wmcommercialroofing.com, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to learn more. Novellus Eurexville is the world leader in aluminum recycling, and they need you. They have immediate openings for general laborers, equipment operators, and various skilled trade positions. They'll start you at $22 per hour or higher. There are advancement opportunities, and Novellus offers industry-leading benefits. To apply or find out more, go to novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. That's novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. Novellus is an equal opportunity employer. It is the Dumont Sporting Goods postgame show as the Malvern Hornets receive their Division Three East District Championship medals. 
And what a night of high school basketball from Uricksville. Thanks to everybody who tuned in throughout today's presentation. Malvern advances 61 to 50. They will travel on now to the regionals in Athens. And let me tell you, Stump, there is not a single person out there who cannot say that this one was not earned tonight. No, again, that's the big thing of a good team right now. They were in a dogfight there the se uh, in the second half, down at halftime. And we talked about when they came out, you just looked at their body language. There is absolutely no panic. And, and when you have great point guard like Jay Allen Barino and you have great wings who can control the ball and guys inside like Mitchell Miner, Jared Withrow, again, that control the boards, that's a powerful team. It is going to be something really to deal with down the road here. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, this was an entire uh, this was an entire team effort tonight. But you cannot say enough either on the other side for the Martins Ferry Purple Riders who were in this game from the start, and it was kind of that uneasy start to the second half that kind of put them away. Unfortunately, they kept clawing back, but unfortunately for them, just not enough. Yeah, again, did a nice job. Again, had the lead at half, like we talked about earlier. And like Coach Tucci said, that defense in the third quarter just tightened right up and really confused the uh, Martin Ferry Purple Riders. Well, and oh, it got real quiet in here. I was like, what's going on? It certainly did as we're having <laughs> uh, IBC Commissioner uh, Spinell is talking to the Hornets, and I'm not sure. I think you're just giving him a little yeah. congratulations as Barino holds <laughs> the trophy skyward and gives it to his team. Uh, I wanted to go through the stats real quick for the Purple. Actually, did you finish your thought? Oh, yeah, again, give credit to uh, Martins Ferry tonight. Uh, a good team there. Uh, really pushed Melbourne to the limit tonight. And, again, we were uh, privileged to watch a great game. Well, as we look through Martins Ferry for their final stat line here, as in the loss, it was Alex Reese who read, led the way for them, 23 points, 10 for 10 from the free throw line, six rebounds, three assists, and two blocks. He was a man down there in the paint sometimes, but ultimately just came up short. Yeah, the only thing, though, only two baskets the second half. It I think Melbourne did a great job containing him a little bit better. It was actually almost unbelievable to watch realistically. Uh, Anthony Booth, he buried three shots from deep in the loss as he goes home with 13 points, three rebounds, and a steal as well as a block. Outside of that, the scoring came by way of Elijah Smith, who had eight points. Then you had four points coming from Turner Kroll. He also had a pair of rebounds. Maurice Barnett, two points and two rebounds. That was all the scoring for Martins Ferry. You know the amazing thing? Martins Ferry, only four field goals in the second half. Well, not only that, did you notice something else after that hot three-point shooting in the first half? They didn't make one from deep yep. in the second half. Yep. You want to talk about adjustments for Malvern? That was as good as they could possibly get for them. For the Hornets in their victory, leading the way for them, and really it was spread out all night long for this team. And you got 13 big points from Jay Allen Barino. He also had five rebounds, three steals, seven assists, and two blocks. Outside of that, Drake Hutchison had himself another nice game. 12 points, three steals, and a rebound. You also got 10 points by Ray of Rodney Smith, who had five steals himself with two rebounds. Dylan Phillips ended up with nine points, five rebounds, two steals, and two assists. Then you got seven points from Mitchell Miner, three rebounds, two blocks, and assist. Jared Withrow, he had six points, 12 rebounds. <laughs> and we talked in the pregame about how big it was for the Hornets to crash the glass. Yeah, and that, again, what makes Melvin so dangerous right now. You could have one or two guys with an off night, and not miss a beat with that much scoring, with that much good rebounding. Both, how many def or offensive rebounds did they have tonight? They had four or five awful missed free throws. Well, as I count up here and try to do that without counting out loud is the thing. Try 16 offensive boards for Malvern tonight. 16 stump. Well, and if you look at your stat line, too, there was not a single three made by Malvern the second half either. Coach they only Tucci made said, one in the first. Yeah, said we, we're having troubles tonight. we got to pound it in the paint. And like you said, Coach Tucci and that entire coaching staff with some halftime adjustments doing a fabulous job. When is the last time you heard of a team winning a district championship and they were one for whatever it was from deep? They hit one three-pointer. Well, Jay Allen Barino, again, with the, such great assists, they really crashed on him. He was patient, had some head fakes, nice bounce passes. Uh, especially to his guys down low, Jared Withrow, Mitchell Miner had a bunch of points just from his assists. 
uh, great overall effort by the entire Melvin Hortons team. It certainly was as Adam Sueski and Shannon Thomas down there working hard on their social media and post-game duties. Because it is Malvern cutting the net here from, your, from Claymont High School, we're probably not going to get our McInturf Realty player of the game because obviously we want him to celebrate with his team and rightfully so. Now this was an interesting one as we went back and forth with it because you got a lot of good scoring output from a lot of players. You know, you look at Barino with the seven assists. That's a big stat. You look at Rodney Smith with the five steals. That's a big stat. You look at Rod Dylan Phillips scoring some big buckets. Drake, Drake Hutchinson Drake with Hutchinson. how many floaters there in the middle. But on top of all of that, one thing we had to go with because we identified it as a key to the game beforehand, and he had a monster night in on the glass and in the paint. Jared Withrow is going to be our McInturf Realty player of the game. Six points for him, 12 rebounds. He had seven offensively, and that is a huge reason why Malvern won tonight. Uh, when you struggle as much as we did to find your player of the game, <laughs> that says a lot about a team. And, and like I said, Jared Withrow did a great job tonight. And, again, it's all part of all those, those parts of a team that come together and win big games like this. Well, you know, and I asked Coach Tucci before the game about his seven-headed monster, as he liked to say, for his <laughs> offensive scoring. Well, guess how many players scored tonight for Malvern? I'm going to guess seven off the top of my head. Look at that. <laughs> Funny how that works out. So the Malvern Hornets will advance 61-50. to 50. They go on to Athens now and the regional rounds, and I wasn't actually entirely sure if we uh, we knew who they were going to be potentially playing. I think that might have been what Adam and Shannon were looking down there. But i got to say, Stump, I mean, given how this team not only has rolled in the games that they have been heavy favorites in, but also battled it out and found the edge in games that were a little bit tighter, I don't think anybody wants to play Malvern right now. Yeah, when you're in the IVC, again, you're playing a lot of good teams in there. And, again, I think that gets them ready for this point of the season. They're 26-0 right now. Um, and, and, and like Coach Tucci said, sometimes you can kind of works against you a little bit right now because you haven't had that loss to kind of get that edge right back right now. But he, like he said, he is very proud of that team because that team handles success so well. Well, I will put it this way. We do not know who they are going to be playing yet because that game is tomorrow at 4 o'clock. They will be playing the winner of the number one seed out of the southeast one in Wheelersburg and the number four seed McDermott Northwest. You so, know, what a special time, you know, for all these Melbourne Hornets right now cutting down these nets. You know, there's there's a good group of crowd right now watching them. You know, good for their parents, good for, you know, grandpas, grandmas, uncles. Again, the, the Melbourne community really came out in full support tonight. Uh, but these kids will never forget stepping up that ladder and uh, cutting the nylon down. Given how many people were in the stands behind us and out on the court currently, I don't <laughs> think there's anybody left in the entire village of Malvern right now, that's for sure. You know, we were talking how hot it is. It's amazing how cool off <laughs> cool it is right it now is, with all this fans gone. Well, I had to jump out from under the desk because I think <laughs> I, 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 I think I was about to be swimming down here because this is just unbelievable. It is a hot gymnasium. But you got to think it was as packed as it could be, and for good reason. The Malvern Hornets – Perfect season continues, and their quest for a state tournament berth and maybe even a state championship continues as they win 61-50 to over the Martins Ferry Purple Riders. Thank you, everybody, once again, all of our sponsors who have supported us throughout the season and all of the sponsors who jumped on for today's broadcast, as well as all of our faithful listeners from throughout the year uh, during uh, every single broadcast that we have had. We've got more tournament coverage on the way tomorrow, and I promise you we got more tournament coverage ahead <laughs> with the Malvern Hornets. That is for certain. As for Adam Sueski, Shannon Thomas, Aaron Stump, and the Claxon Communications crew this evening of Casey Claxon and Logan McPeak, as well as Mary Alice back there at our radio station pushing all the right buttons for us. I am Nick McWilliams. Thanks again, everybody. We'll be seeing you soon. Thanks for watching this Claxon Communications production of High School Sports on the Big Z Sports YouTube channel. For the latest news and scores, follow Big Z Sports on Facebook, on Twitter at Big underscore Z Sports, and on Instagram. Don't miss any of the live stream coverage all season long by simply subscribing for free to Big Z Sports on our YouTube channel. For the best in high school sports coverage, there is only one Big Z Sports.